Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever you might be. Welcome to the show. Uh, I forget what episode number it is. I, I need to make sure I look there, don't I? Um, I forget what uh, show number it is. It's 120-something. So thank you ever so much for joining us again live, if you're joining us live. If you're joining us on Catch Up, hello. Uh, try and get us live, because it's kind of fun to interact in the chat group as well whilst we're doing the show uh, with our guests who are live. Uh, and we'll introduce those in just a minute. But before we do, I need to go and do the usual kind of housekeeping rubbish. So first of all, um, please do like, comment, share and subscribe. Not necessarily in that order, um, but if you can do the, any of those, that'd be fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, if you want to donate to the show because we use your funds to keep the show running, pay for all the software services and the licenses and all this kind of stuff, um, you can do that in a number of ways, one of which is through PayPal, uh, which you can use the link just there on the screen. It's also in the description just down below. Uh, the video there of course if you're watching live on YouTube you can avail yourself of the YouTube uh, super chat super stickers send us your comments send us some money doesn't have to be anything substantial every penny counts and goes towards keeping us on the air so thank you in advance and thanks to everyone that has donated over the last couple of years because you guys and gals and everyone else have been fantastic uh, in keeping us here and that's why we're still here um, and of course if you're watching on catch up then obviously that stuff doesn't exist, but the thanks button does. And if you look below, if you're watching this like later on, there's a button underneath that says thanks. It's got a little heart next to it. And if you click that, you could do the same with the super chat and super stickers. Uh, no amount is too small, no amount is too large. Uh, but thank you ever so much in advance for your donations. They are super, uh, we are super grateful for them. Um, social media, we're all over that. So Twitter um instagram of course the facebook group if you haven't joined the facebook group yet please do it's a very simple process just search for the prosynth network uh, there are two pages actually it's prosynth network and then prosynth network show that show page is simply for this thing it's just where we broadcast it onto facebook the actual group where all the cool people are is just prosynth network and you just click on the join button there just answer three very simple questions to prove that you're human and that you'll behave yourself when you're in the group and then you're in and then you can mix it with um everyone all sorts of people and we've got uh, we've got number one selling professionals we've got uh, film composers who regularly have films at the top of all of the charts we've got um, people working in their bedrooms and working on their ipads or their laptops or their desktops it doesn't matter ignore the pro bit that's just to make sure that the kind of the group is taken a little bit more seriously but we've got everyone in there from all walks of life and all professions and we all get on and share our information and knowledge and it's a very cool place to hang out so come and come and see us there and of course we're here on youtube as of course because you're probably watching us from there um if you have a question for our guest today uh, or for any of the uh, the show hosts then please do stick that into the chat in the youtube chat preface it with a big capital q and uh, we'll we'll know we can then put it into a bucket and then call that back up later on um so if you have a question please do ask it don't be afraid don't be shy you don't need to pay for a question either you just hit q there we go it's all done also right i think that is all of the stuff out of the way so i can get rid of all of that off my screen i can see in the chat room we've got loads of regulars in there and if there's anybody new do say hi and they're all a pretty welcoming bunch as we are too um so yeah please do um come in and say hi and no i don't have a blue rinse it's, it's i'll tell you what it is <laughs> so i have my, my room light i set it to blue because it kind of sets off particularly when it's dark and not so light as it sets all the keyboards off and looks nice because i don't have fancy stuff with all those like what, what do they call it um vegas mode you know with all the lights that go backwards i don't have oh, anything yeah. like that mine are all too old for that sort of thing so i thought well i'll just set them off with a blue light but because i'm going gray and because of the new camera angle and the clarity of the new thing, everything looks rather, yeah. So it does look like I've, who was that woman on Coronation Street? Oh, I've just had me purple rinse done. Oh. Who was that? Phyllis. Phyllis, Phyllis that's it, Phyllis. Yeah. Percy, Percy, oh, Percy, <laughs> Percy. Um, <laughs> oh, we're off to a blind ear. Um, by the way, um, I'm going to introduce Ben. Obviously, you can hear him in the background. Uh, let's, let's cross over uh, to uh, somewhere outside Warrington or inside Warrington. I'm never too sure. Whereabouts are you, Ben? I'm not, I'm not too sure myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere in Cheshire. Somewhere, somewhere in Cheshire. Yeah. Somewhere in deepest, yeah. darkest. It's Cheshire, isn't that um, like footballers' wives land? Uh, where yeah, all the, the wags not live. Here. Not, yeah. not round here, it's not. Not round there, no. no, no. It's slums here. 
<laughs> how, are you, how are you, sir? I, I'm great. Yeah, great. Just uh, had a bit of a heavy week at work, so I'm a, a bit tired. We had a meeting at the end of the day yesterday, and I fell asleep in it. So <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been overdoing it this week. So if I nod off, you know, just just scream or something. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I, I was talking to my son because my son's just got his GCSE results the other week. And he said, oh, yeah, um, his friend got, like, the lowest possible score in, in one of the exams because he fell asleep halfway into the oh, exam. Yeah. He just put his head wow. down on the desk and went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, kids. Brilliant. So have you been yeah. busy? You've been gigging? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we did a couple of gigs last week. Um, mm -hmm. No idea where they were now. Not Doesn't make great view in this, but I just can't remember. <laughs> uh, we're in St. Helens <laughs> this week. Uh, Rugby got country. one gig, yeah. Oh, we did. Uh, we did Martin Beer Festival. Uh, we, oh, we did that. That, that was quite good. Yeah, uh, it was great for me because I'm now teetotal, so couldn't couldn't partake in any of the wonderful beers that was no on good, offer. You know, that's but, no good. Mm. No, I had, I had a conversation with um, my cardiology. I just got a, good news today. I got discharged from the cardiology department, so oh, my heart yeah. my heart is working again. Yes, um, very good. But we were talking about alcohol consumption. I said, uh, I've actually, because I've, I've quit for a month, I'm, I'm doing a dry September uh, for a number of reasons. But, you know, one is mostly health. Um, and I'm day two, and I think, yeah, I'm looking, normally looking forward to a glass of wine tonight, but it's going to be uh, either a non-alcoholic beer or orange squash. Yay me. Yeah. Oh, don't get old and fat, guys. That's the, uh, that's the thing. Don't do that. Anyway. Good to see you, Ben. And yeah, um, no I would normally at this point introduce uh, Sir Kent of Spong, um, but at this moment he is completely MIA. Um, we have no idea where he is. Um, he's got the link. Uh, maybe I know yesterday he, on his um, what he calls show, and that's him, not me doing. That's him that does that. Um, he <laughs> he'd gone to dye his hair. He has this thing every now and again. He'll just dye his hair a random color. And he got the colour. It was going to be blue. I think maybe in honour of our guest this week. And he dabbled a little bit on you know, the inside of his elbow, the allergy test. And he blew up like a balloon. And he wow. wasn't in a very good way for about 24 hours. But last night he was kind of recovering and seemed okay. But uh, no, I've, I've messaged him and nothing. So it, I've got the purplish hair. Kent was going to have blue hair. But with fantastic, I was, I was going to say turquoise. I don't want to insult, but we've got a fantastic <laughs> guest for you. Um, it's the one and only Paulie Alex Bow. Good evening. Good evening. How are we doing? Uh, I'm very well. How are you? Not bad. Not so bad. Where, do we, where do we find you this fine evening? Um, in my home in Birmingham. Birmingham. Where about yeah, any, Birmingham. Sort of, are you sort of northwest, southeast of Birmingham? Uh, sort of Bartley Green. Area, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. My mother's side so, of the family come from Tamworth and Willenall. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I've got We're quite close to everything here, which is good. Nice, yeah. We I love Birmingham. You know, Birmingham is a great city. We're just outside of the city, so, we're, nice. you know, it's kind of nice, kind of green area, but we can just drive in when we want to, you know. Yeah. yeah. Not that we did much of that during lockdown. We were no. just, <laughs> quite. you know. Absolutely. Work, working from home, and it, try and be a mental health worker working from home. It's not easy. <laughs> so is that that's your day up, job? Is it? Are you okay? Yeah, that's my day job. Yeah, that must be a pretty uh, rewarding and interesting career. Well, I get to use music in it. Oh, fantastic! So actually, today every Friday morning we have um, a music session. Oh, cool! It's sort of about ooh, I think it's about ten till twelve, and nice. um, we get a load of percussion out. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, uh, I I get my guitar and we just play through a load of load of songs, mainly awesome. 60s and 70s because of the because um, of the main demographic. But sure. you know, I'll chuck chuck a few 80s ones in, good and a, a couple of modern ones in as well. So it's quite fun. Yeah, nice, good, it's a good way to end the week. Indeed, yeah. but but outside of the day job, obviously um, you are yeah. a bit of a muso, um, and you're into your vintage synths and your vintage computers, and you've just started a new YouTube channel. So lots I to have. talk about. You've got a nice little Definitely. backdrop there. You've got behind you. That's an Amiga, isn't it? Yeah, I've got yeah. my uh, Amiga five hundred plus there. Nice. That was in the studio, but I've just put an Amiga twelve hundred in there, which runs okay. a lot faster. So not that any of the software from 1993 really needs such a fast machine <laughs> but i was like you know why not um yeah. what else we got um 
Your specky. Got my original specky. There. Look at that. That's the one with the proper wow. keys, not the little rubbery things. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a, that was a bit of a hand me down when I got it. I think I I got it in about 1989, so it's quite late in the Specky's life. But, yeah. You know, for for a, for a kid, for the first computer, is brilliant. Yeah. Loads were you were you space. always a Spectrum person rather than a, a Commodore? <laughs> yes. Yeah, but then I switched to Amiga, didn't I? I yeah. There, yeah. There, was, there was no Sinclair really after the the no. C5 yeah. QL double blow. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was my there. path as well. I started off on the Spectrum and I went, went to the Amiga, and then from the Amiga I went went to Max and have pretty yeah. much been here ever since. Well, once you go but... Mac, you never go back. Is well, that, so to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Well, look, it's great to have you on, and I mean, you've been becoming a little bit prominent on the YouTubes of late, haven't you? Yeah, because um, really you're weird. becoming bit of a regular on sonic state which is great to see you on there it's, it's always Thank good to you. see a new face on there and yeah. especially one that is so into their stuff and, <laughs> and so verbose and intelligent and what's the word uh it's gone out of my head but anyway no you're really good on there and we love you on there and i thought well crikey we better get you on here because nick nick has accused us i think you know tongue-in-cheek of stealing his guests so i thought oh, well yeah, you know yeah. you've got proof now haven't you yeah let's do it <laughs> now um we were saying before we came on out i mean i've known you online um yeah. we've never never had the pleasure of meeting in person but uh, i've known you online for many many years through our mutual friend mr mark doty yes um who uh you know we're both big fans of i think you, we'd probably fight over him if we mark were left in a room mark doty um who has of course been on the show along with his uh his lovely partner recently and we're hoping yes. very soon to get the both of them on together which would kind of just like that'd be incredible that would be great be wouldn't it yeah so yeah, yeah fingers he's crossed. a very interesting articulate guest isn't he yeah he talk i mean my my um expertise is more the late 80s mm. to uh and and specifically i have a lot of synths from 1997 randomly i don't know what to do <laughs> about that year but I've got like a nord g1 microwave xt i've got like yeah. like about 10 cents from 1997 so it's like so i know that stuff and he knows kind of the earlier stuff so yeah. when we get talking yeah it's a good balance it's pretty, pretty yeah. fun maybe we should get you on as well as him and that would be hell yeah we'd have to sort I, 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 I think it's like two classmates at school who shouldn't sit next to one another though yeah maybe. yeah <laughs> well, I, i'm game i'm up for a laugh guess what here he uh, is yeah. yay nice that you get dressed and everything I can't find I can't find the bloody t shirt or anything. You're letting the side down, look no <laughs> How it's are you, like, Kent? How are bit. you? What what's wrong? Um, <laughs> you didn't try and do your hair again, did you? I didn't get to sleep again last night either. Oh no. Oh, okay. So um yeah, so word of warning to all of you, if you're gonna dye your hair, <laughs> do the test. Do the test. <laughs> do yes. the test. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Like, well, look, we're, we're happy you survived the test. <laughs> you are here to you, tell the tale. Can you imagine if I'd just gone ahead and done it? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Your head would have just gone bang, wouldn't it? Oh, dear. Well, I'm anyway. going to do it blue as well, Paulie. As well. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Vivid. Ah, oh, mate, it was going to be great, but if, no. If you get the um the, the directions uh, semi-permanent die, yeah. I find that's, that's non. That's what I use, and yeah, it lasts that, quite, quite a time. Yeah, I'm going to go for the uh, the, the uh, you know the temporary ones and stay yeah. away from the permanent now. Well, you yeah. should have done well, what I do, and that's just like have grey hair and have a coloured light above your head, and then there's no allergy involved apparently because I'm getting told that I've got a pink rinse tonight. So I just put like, <laughs> blue LEDs in my ear. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be do different. it, wouldn't it? Yeah. But indeed. <laughs> anyway, are you, are you well, Kent? I mean, other than the hair incident, yeah, uh, other than that, you're you're all fine and dandy. Uh, yeah, the, the um, swelling all went down roughly about lunchtime. This is the swelling in the oh, neck. I mean, yeah, yeah, just to be yeah, precise. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, oh, oh no, it's been years. Did you do the patch test on your arm though? Yeah, or... yeah, I did. I mean, that the... was some nasty stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was oh, like, so because all the swelling went down, the pain went, and everything like that. And I went, by about one o'clock, I went, <laughs> and then I just got, like this, been woken up by Fiona. She goes, what time's your show? Oh, seven. She goes, it's 12 minutes past seven now. 
<laughs> thanks, thanks for the heads up, girl. Oh, bless. <laughs> well, at least, at least you're here. I, I yeah, have arrived. Nice what I miss. <laughs> Um, when we were just doing the introductions, we were talking about Doty for a little bit, um, yep. trying to invoke him. I know he he doesn't show up. He he has occasionally shown up in the chat, but uh, mm. I think you have to say it five times into the mirror, don't you? To, sure. to get him in a dark so, room. Yeah, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, backwards. That's it. With with, with a mini mug. Um, <laughs> so, a candle yeah. behind a mini mug. Yeah. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Um, talking of which, um, has anybody heard the results of the Bob Moog Foundation raffle yet? Have they been announced? I want to know if I've won. Oh. Or more to the point, I want to know if Kent won because Kent probably stood a better chance having bought like a bucket load of tickets well, by kind mistake. Of more accident than anything else, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, no, I, I no. haven't heard anything. No. I don't oh, well. we'll keep our eyes out for that one. But uh, yeah. Cool. Well, we've got um, a bunch of news to talk about afterwards. Paulie's going to be with us for the first half of the show. So please do get your questions in. If you have anything to ask Paulie, please stick your question in the chat preface it with a big capital q so we know we can see it um and what happens is we put it into a bucket and that bucket has already got something in there because we've just had a lovely five pound donation uh from jason crouch <laughs> for the find and save kent fund well there yeah, you go it worked, it worked. It how, worked. how much it, is a helicopter to yeah. <laughs> yeah four pounds fifty and a fifty pence right. tip i'll do it there, do it. there you go pilot. So thank you ever so much, Jason. That's much appreciated. And of course, if you want to do the same as Jason, just hit the buttons. You know where they are. I don't need to tell you anymore. So we're going to talk to Paulie now, and and then we'll do the the news. And there's some really interesting stuff in the news. Looking at my list, um, there's some surprises, some not surprises, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, a few other little bits in mm. Bob's here and there. So anyway, Paulie Alex Bow. Yeah. <sighs> You are known as a bit of a synthesis, uh, a very talented musician. You've just started a new YouTube channel, which we'll come to in, in just a little while. But I, what we all want to know is where did it all start for you? Where did your passion for vintage computers and vintage synthesizers and all of the things that you are so well known for, for being in love with, where did it all start for you? There's, I think there's a couple of different angles you can get at with synths. Um, when I went for keyboard lessons at about mm, 13, 14, mm -hmm. I had a great teacher called Sean who, um, we didn't teach, he didn't teach piano grades. He taught something called the Technics pop keyboard course. Okay. I've got a book somewhere. I'll post it sometime on the group. And it did teach you left and right hand notation and things like that. Mm -hmm. But he would at the end of each session, just spend five minutes because they were Technics arranger keyboards with custom patterns. Yeah. But like maybe custom four bar patterns with four variations. Um, he'd teach us how to uh, arrange something and sequence something, mm -hmm. you know, just like in a looping way. Here's the drums, yeah. put them down, then sequence your, your piano bit. Mm -hmm. And he used to sequence stuff that was, you know, quite quite simple to grasp what the separate parts were, you know, mm -hmm. like um, something like Ride on Time by Black Box. Right. You can hear the piano bit, you can hear the, the bass bit. And uh, and that's what started me, basically, mm -hmm. sequencing and, and synthesizers. And I had an, an Amiga roughly at that time. So mm -hmm. I, I bought a MIDI interface and I started using trackers like Octomed and ProTracker and things oh, like that yeah. to sequence MIDI instruments, but also to start sampling and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, Cause it, uh, this was about 1995, I think I got my Amiga for a hundred quid, which I got it for second hand. It was something that like a 13 year old could sample on mm -hmm. uh, only eight bit, 28 kilohertz. But you could you could layer up those samples and you know tweak them and and sequence them and yeah I was just hooked for life uh, by that point really yeah, yeah. So, but I so... think the obsession with computers is probably just like an autism thing as well okay uh, at that age obviously by this point in my thirties I've kind of worked out a lot of the rough edges of life mm -hmm. in interaction with other people but when I was a kid, computers made way more sense to me than other people. You know mm. what I mean? You just yeah. poke something in. If it's not right, it'll tell you. And yeah. then it'll just run and you'll yeah. get, you know, repeatable results. So I think 
it was what we call in autism circles a special interest okay uh, a kind of obsession that you put a lot of time uh and energy into other other people autistic people i speak to have different special interests some completely outside of um of anything technical you know mm-hmm. some people it could be i don't know a love of gardening or something like that um and there's obviously a blurry line where autism ends and good old fashioned british eccentricity <laughs> takes over um but but yeah i think that's why i i found something that i loved early on mm-hmm. and then um and kept with it yeah you know? it's, 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 it's a world it's, isn't it synthesis yeah yeah i mean that's it's interesting you say that because um at the Centre for Computing History, which is uh, in Cambridge, a place that yes. we go and do the synthesized event at once a year, about four or five years ago, the the owner came up to me. He said, "Come and have, come and have a look at this chap here." And he sat down, and Jason had provided him with an Atari ST five twenty, yeah. I think it was, and an S one thousand, Akai S one thousand. Beautiful. Yeah, and this kid apparently um, was non communicative. Um, yeah. very very withdrawn but as soon as he put him in front of the Atari and the S- this S1000 and Jason said you know you this you, here's a few pointers he was in figured it all out and was making yeah. drum and bass beats just like that yeah. and it was incredible he just came you could see him emerging from from his you know proverbial shell yeah saw him again uh, this year and he is now, you know, communicative with not just, you know, when he's doing the music, he's just talking all the time. He's passionate. That's he's enthusiastic. Really it was just an incredible difference it made to to him and his life. And it was just yeah, yeah the power of technology and music with anyone. But I mean, especially with, with people that have special you know needs. It's just incredible. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so. You know, you've you've got a huge collection of you know some vintage synthesizers. Actually, there there was a question that came in. I'll just throw this one in. Um, sure. Andy Synth Addict, who's one of our moderators in the chat, says, "Why did and I've I've challenged you about this? Why did you hide the DX7 in the back of your studio tour video? Um, and you didn't even give it a credit. You didn't even say, oh, look, DX7.' The, Do you um, not like it? No, I love the DX7. Um, so one of my um, before I I kind of branched out with my projects which i'll get to in a little while i guess mm. talk about which different ones i put everything on one youtube account called elmo sex whistle mm-hmm. which was my band at the time but i put on a load of demos of various vintage synths and i've got a, a really long video i did where all the music was done on dx7s mm-hmm. um including quite a good kind of new wavy track called chant number three yep in the spirit of Spandau Ballet, but <laughs> um, but I found out there was a chant number two that some of the band did, so I was like, chant number three. Uh, about putting loads of pressure on yourself, which yep. I was doing at the time. So I was like, cathartic, uh, cathartic therapy songwriting is a massive thing in my world, really. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really useful. But uh, I love the DX7. I unfortunately, in my rush, forgot to put a title in. The DX7 was on the stand where the Nautilus currently is. Right. Because I've been... Um, so at least I replaced it with something that also has six operators. This is true. Uh, uh, FM. And um, I've got to say that I, I, I didn't really ever play a Kronos. I bought the Nautilus because it was um, B-Stock. I think I right. got it for something like 1300 quid or something brand new. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was great, but I've got to say it's it's a total playground that synth, and yeah. uh, it has the wave shaping of the O one W. It has a nice polyphonic MS twenty emulation, mm-hmm. with some filter FM. I love filter FM. You'll find this out, <laughs> and um, and yeah. So at least I replaced it with something that this that has six off FM. In. We'll we'll let you off. I know that you love the D X seven. I've seen your work, um, but you do have a thing. I can program it from the front panel, by the exactly. way. Exactly. I was going to sort of come to you know your sort of uh, interest in synths with really difficult UIs. Yes. You, you, yes. you beat yourself up with that one a lot, don't you? <laughs> See, the thing is, and I don't know whether it's the autism, but I can hold the entire patch in my head. Right. Or go through all the parameters. 
it's the same with music actually i kind of i listen to music and i i've pretty much remembered it um the, there were songs from my childhood before i could even play instruments mm -hmm. where i knew what the chords were and remembered them from the age of four or five and then remembered and and played them to myself not knowing what the song was and then years later i heard it again and i was like oh i actually did remember all the chords that's really weird so mm. there's a kind of i i think probably just one autistic guy designed 80s uis <laughs> it's fine for me i don't yeah. know what you're all complaining about me. <laughs> I think fine for me. so but there are limits the worst ui synth ever it's called the Kawai K11. Oh, uh, yes. Not the K12. It's mm -hmm. actually a separate instrument based on the K4. So right. it's got a lot of general MIDI, but they really didn't want you to edit the patches, so they made the <laughs> UI terrible. So um, <laughs> there were some single oscillator patches and some double oscillator patches, which eat twice the polyphony. Right. But you can't choose that. You have to edit an already existing you know, amongst the 127, yeah, you yeah. have to scroll through a load of menus and then choose an already existing dual oscillator patch and edit that. It's oh, wow. absolute madness. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that one is is a hard limit, and I do actually forget that one <laughs> if I haven't used it in all. But it's got some cool sounds on it, so I keep it around, and it was very cheap. It's a very cheap, decent controller keyboard. Mm. It has two lots of MIDI ports on it. What but, is your favorite uh, synth of that ilk to program? Yes. Yeah, favorite so, difficult synth. Favorite difficult synth. I must say, the emotional, the emotional reward of finding something that nearly nobody else has put up with to get to. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you've been, you're a miner, you've been crawling through crap for like hours <laughs> to get this golden nugget to use in a song that no one else has found yeah that's why i do it it's pretty rewarding but i've yeah. got to say it's probably um do 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 the curse vile k2000 oh mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that is just menus and yeah. is that vast? algorithms it's vast yeah. Yeah, quite. <laughs> aptly, very aptly named isn't it? um and you know you scroll through and you select your algorithms and various stuff but I always thought, you know, if it was good enough for Rick Wright to play live oh, with Pink yeah. Floyd, then it's Quite. it's good enough for me. Indeed. I mean, yeah. I don't want to blow smoke. Good. I don't want to blow smoke up the the proverbial, but you are considerably younger than the rest of us certainly here on on screen. Um, and your passion for old synths. I mean, these were synths that we were playing and messing okay. around with when they first came out. But you've you've sure. kind of developed this this real passion for the vintage stuff. I just wondered where that, that sort of came from, what inspired you, what taught you about these yeah. things. So, uh, um, and by the way, I'm, I, I feel some sort of weird kind of midway point between generations because I'm kind of really early millennial. Right. But, with, but more like exennial because I was born okay. in 1982. Okay. So that means I had an analog childhood and a digital, you know, yeah. teenage years. Um, but it was a website called Sealed's Deep Synthesis. Ah, That's yes. what started me um, on it. Um, there it is. There it is. It's only available on um, Wayback Machine now, sadly. And most of the MP3 demos are gone. But... Um, as you can see, he covered a lot of... He disappeared, sadly, one day, and his domain then ran out. Um, he covered all these weird digital synths, you know, like the Kawais, mm. the Korg. I think, the, yeah, the Korgs are there, the DW8000 and stuff like that. Yes. So it was my mission to... There's a weird Casio called the Casio uh, CTK1000. Yeah, yeah. And that um, that has a weird sync wave shaping fm synthesis in a home keyboard that is only partially editable so i was like i've got to track one of them down so i did <laughs> oh you got one yeah i got one so it was my mission to buy all the weird synths from sealed nice. deep synthesis, basically and i, I did and to... and i kind of just enjoy as i said mining for gold yeah so hopefully that's that's an okay answer 
Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm, I'm just yeah. I'm just going to bring up that CTK 1000 on screen here just to. So I mean, yeah, this obviously Wayback Machine really doesn't. Uh, I mean, I guess this web web page, this is probably it's, very um, similar to how it was back in the day. YX but... day overview. Yeah. Um, works that link? Then maybe it it will. But yeah, it's um. Yeah, but yeah. it's there. It is. Yeah. It's got voice architecture, and he just went through everything. You know. Mm. So this was your Bible, really, sort of. This was my Bible for yeah. learning weird and wonderful things. So I pretty much bought bought nearly all of them. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then got a bit of analog after. Mm -hmm. I've got to say, I did have my Korg Monopoly quite early on in about 2012 because I wanted yeah. a real analog mono synth, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I bought my analog stuff like my Pocket 600 and uh, Polybrute and stuff like that later on because mm -hmm. it was never really my focus. But I do love analog, you know. Yeah. As I said, did uh, analog childhood digital? Yeah, there are some oddball things on there. I mean, there are some. Yeah, obviously, there's there's things like the DX7, the M1, yeah. uh, some of the big Kawais on there. Um, but there's there's some of those. I've never heard of that one before. You know, it's just yeah, yeah, it's some really odd things. Um, but like I was you should, I'm you not aware pop of that. down someday and um, yeah, and you can hear you can hear them you can hear the nice sounds. Mm. Without having to wrestle with them, and then you know I'll um I'll sample whatever you want if you yeah. hear anything that you like, and then you can just you know cool. have multi samples and not bother with the cryptic yeah. UI. Although you're okay <laughs> yourself, aren't you, with your Yamaha stuff? And yeah, yeah, it doesn't mean I understand it, but I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like it. It's okay. Um, <laughs> so, have we got any uh, other questions there, gents? Well, let's have a look. Um... Let's see this one from Andy again. Yeah, uh, Polly had some epic posts about the Kawai K1 back in the Harmony Central KSS days and yeah. other stuff later on in Gear Space. Oh, it's not yeah. really a question, is it? It's not really a question, it's a statement. Thank though, you. Yeah. Yeah. I used to enjoy yeah. Harmony Central, that was quite a chill place. Yeah, yeah I, I don't um, think I ever really hung out there. I know, I know that, that Gear Space is popular and useful, but I don't mm. find it the most friendly welcoming you have to kind of go in and think where's my pinch of salt <laughs> yeah it, it, it's um uh, it's where, an where's acquired taste of sugar it? to um to, to eat yeah. while i'm where's a sugar cube to eat while i'm reading this but That's it. your um your facebook group is actually one of the nicest synth communities oh, i have great. ever come across it's just well, really chill that's yeah. what uh he him over there that's why he started him. it <laughs> that's that's what I wanted. I, yeah. oh God, I I hated the viciousness of some of the groups, and yeah. I thought you got to be able to talk about this stuff that we love without falling out with each other. That's you know, it. we're, we're all into it, so that's why I'm not allowed to <laughs> post on it. Yeah, <laughs> why, why get annoyed? <laughs> yeah. I, I find um, that um, I don't know. There's there there is there is quite a bit of goodwill amongst fans of a certain thing. So that mostly helps things along. Do you know what I mean? We're all into the same thing. Mm. Um, and you have a, an instant connection with other, you know, synth synthesizer fans. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, when I first met you online, it was like, oh, wow, who's this? <laughs> into Amigas. Into every, it was like, wow, soulmate. Are you like, <laughs> made this, up. this must be a, a cool person, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't found anything. You haven't found out the hideous truth yet. So, <laughs> in a good phase of our friendship. Before we um, before we talk about your latest venture on on YouTube. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask this question that was thrown into the chat, mm. which was from Lady Aptitude. Um, and she's asking, who, who are your early musical influences, inspirations, or heroes? So, here we go. Early. Let's talk about the 80s. Do you remember the Ra Band? Yes. Yeah. Clouds Across the Moon. Clouds Across the Moon, Falcon, all of that stuff. Yeah. My parents loved the Ra Band. R A H. Okay. Yeah. Richard Anthony Houston, who also arranged the string parts in the long and winding road, randomly. 
So you know those nice. Mm -hmm. du, 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 mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you did all of that. Um, so if there's some really sort of 12 inch record kind of deep cuts of their stuff, and he used he used synths amazingly well. Mm -hmm. You know, great chords, great songwriting, but the the synthesis was just like top notch. Um, the other the other big one was 1986 had a TV show called Starfleet, which oh, yes. the soundtrack was written by uh, Paul Bliss from the Moody Blues. Mm. And he used the Oberheim system at the time, which I think was it the OBX, the DMX, and mm -hmm. the the sequencer. One. SX. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and he made all of the music to Starfleet on that. Brian May later covered the soundtrack. Uh... Um, so... They were incredible influences, sort of timbrely as well as chord wise. Mm -hmm. um, one great thing is, I actually sent because it was heavily inspired by him. I sent Richard Anthony Houston on the raw band uh, fan group. I sent him the theme song to one of my projects called Arcade Dreams, mm -hmm. and he came back and said, "This is a great track." Wow. So it was like, oh my goodness, validation from, you know, my musical hero. That must, have, that must have felt heroes. really cool. It did. Yeah. I've actually, it's happened again when, because I, I also kind of write industrial music as well. Mm -hmm. um, it happened again when I worked with a guy called Jürgen Engler from a German band called Die Krups, mm -hmm. who liked my song so much he, he recorded a version of it for his wow. album. So it's happened kind of twice now. Nice. Um, and to, I think that these moments are important in terms of success because it's not necessarily the financial or fame success, is it? Sometimes things happen in life that can give you a nice, big, warm feeling inside, you know? Validation, isn't it? Validation, and I think that's possibly and validation from the right people. Yeah, from the people might actually be more. Yeah, it might actually be more important than validation from millions of people you don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I got. Um, I wrote an article for. Do you remember Sounds Magazine? Yeah. The yeah the music um, paper. So it was. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so there was that. There was Enemy, and there was Melody Maker, and Sounds. Yeah disappeared after uh, in the 90s sometime and the 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 uh, music writer called uh mick middles um who's written a ton of books about you know bands like new order and the smiths and the fall he's a he's a mancunian he's written about all of those things brilliant books um he put a, like a, a public request out for stuff and um uh, he said like i'm starting sounds up again and i want people to write for it and i thought well, in for a penny in for a pound so I wrote this article and he wrote back and, and he said, you know, a very similar sort of thing. He said, I absolutely love this. This is going in. And That's then he started so giving, and it was just like, wow. You know, I've been writing a blog for, for Yonks, but nobody sort of tells me, oh, that was a really good article. But then when one of your literary heroes kind of yes. you know, says, oh, that was, that was a moment, definitely a moment. Yeah. Wouldn't be brave enough, I don't think, cool. any of my musical output, but um, yeah, that was, that was cool. Um, there, oh, I was gonna yeah. just throw this up. This is that arcade dreams things theme song. Yeah. Should we play a little bit? Let's we see, can do. Let's see if this works. Is that coming through? It is. Yes. There we go. It's only two minutes, but if you want to kind of, it's very funky. And this is all you, yeah? Yeah. I really like this. So that's the one you sent to yeah. Richard, yeah. And Could we play my favourite bit. Oh, <laughs> what was your favourite bit? It's it's on in a bit. Keep All right, going. okay, let's carry on. <laughs> 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 
Oh, that's good. This is good. It's in- Coming up after this. After this breakdown. I thought it was going to be the hard sink bit. your favorite bit there it, it kind of had um I, I mean this with with all, all respect it had a little daft punky kind of feel to it as well didn't it well um, the, i guess the chords in the um in the chorus are, are slightly similar to get lucky mm. as well but yeah it was it, that it kind of vocally thing yeah well, no, very like good your orchestral bit which mm. don't take use in, so but yeah so um arcade dreams is um a documentary on a hundred years of arcade games right starting with that you know those kind of penny machines fortune teller machines that you um you saw uh, in the black and white bit all the way up to the modern day Mm -hmm. um the team's mostly american but i think they are um well we got talking via the amiga actually okay that has opened so many blooming doors for me, the Amiga. Honestly, there's mm. so many creative professionals who got their start with Amiga, and then it's kind of instant, you know, instant rapport. Yeah, yeah. As I said, and um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to hopefully bring a, a bit of British seaside arcade fun. Nice. These things, you know, and we'll film some stuff over here, and and maybe go to the seaside for the day, and. You know, get a stick of rock, some candy yeah. floss. That's some it. Rot your teeth and play some Yeah, videos, yeah. Actually. Hopefully the seagulls won't eat my chip. That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so let's come up to sort of like uh, present day, really. Yeah. And um, Magical Synth Adventure is your new channel. So you've got two channels, Vogue Renegade, which is where you're kind of putting yeah. your stuff, and then yeah. Magical Synth Adventure. What's Tell us about Magical Synth Adventure. What's the premise? Cool. What's your what's your um, your mission statement for that? The mission statement is, on, on Gearspace, I've, for years and years and years, I've been talking about all this obscure stuff and posting MP3 demos of it. Mm-hmm. quite often and people really enjoy it and i saw a, a lot of youtube people having a lot of success mm-hmm. and how they were doing it and things like that um stuff like you know in the computer world lgr lazy game reviews mm-hmm. he does a lot of um oddware yeah. which is where he discusses very odd pc peripherals like um you know, uh, virtual glasses from 1995, virtual reality glasses or whatever. Yeah. I thought I could do the same with synthesizers or audio equipment, basically. Mm-hmm. Because I've got all of this weird stuff from sealed steep synthesis. I've got all of these weird effects boxes um, that I've bought over the years. And I thought people will actually be quite interested to see this. I think the other thing I needed was confidence, and I think that's where work has helped because I present a lot of um, courses to people all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm teaching them anxiety coping skills, or I'm teaching them self esteem skills, or mindfulness. Mm-hmm. People have consistently said that I'm an engaging teacher, so it's like I could probably do this. 
I could probably, you know, and I think at the at this point I've like from the past I've had kind I'm enough in my therapy journey to have the confidence finally mm -hmm. to do something like this. Um, I mean, you are putting yourself out there a bit. You can make yourself yeah. quite vulnerable doing something like this. Um, but the response has been amazing. So, you know, yeah. sorry, it's a little bit emotional, but. No, no, no. It's, I, I really enjoy. I wasn't sure what to expect. And when I, you no, know, when I saw I it. Wasn't. Yeah. And when <laughs> I saw it, it was, um, let's just bring this uh, back onto the screen. Y'all. So there, there's just uh, a small bit of content at the moment. So there's the, the theme, which is very, very catchy. Too catchy. Um, yeah. And then yeah. you've got your favorite, your, your first sort of like full thing is your favorite creative reverbs. Yeah. Um, that was uh, posted a couple of weeks ago. Then it was something no one no one's done yet. I don't mm. think compared Oddball reverbs. Yeah. I haven't seen it too much. Maybe they've done a video on one reverb, but I was like, let's yeah. let's put five of these weird verbs in and a little mm. bit of history and make it fun. Yeah. And then you did you know say the bunker tour, which is a little five minute uh whiz around the studio. Tour. Which was and, which I didn't mention the um DX seven. Yes. Well we've, we've forgiven <laughs> you for that. We've forgiven you for that. Yeah. Um but yeah, what's what's coming up next? Obviously, the child is coming next week, one way of or another. Of course, yeah, we haven't mentioned because, that. Um, what was I going to say? Um, he's he's in breach position, which makes oh, things quite yeah. My daughter was that. So yeah. If he doesn't get born naturally next week, we're going to have a, a C section. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not. She is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she is. Useless me having one. And then um, I'll, I'll just have one in sympathy, darling. Yes. Um, yeah. Have a large then, poo. Well, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they could cut out the um my lunch if <laughs> I have a calorific lunch. Yeah, food really baby, big big meal, and then they're like, there you go, no calories. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's next, of course. Yeah, raising a child. Apparently, the scans have said he's going to have a massive brain. Oh wow! Which Ooh. means I'm going to be like. I'm not going to be a vicarious parent, but, you know, <laughs> I'm going to just try and introduce music, you know. Yeah. yeah. And behind my breath, I'm saying, that kid's going to make me a million. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the management all set up already. <laughs> you know, I... all, all yeah. set up. If we instill some good self-esteem early, you know, so yeah. he's, you know, can, can do all this earlier than me, then um, it should be uh, it should be good. But, no, obviously, you've got to just let kids choose their own path yeah that's what i did and, so i'm just gonna yeah. i'm just gonna love him and um and obviously do some videos um as and when i can and i think if i get a good workflow down it'll be okay mm -hmm. yeah you know it's just getting that the the first video is always difficult because you don't have an established workflow yeah. for youtube and you're just kind of like editing in the dark and going there is this yeah. is this a youtube video yeah. Yeah, and and thankfully it was, and I noticed once people were watching it, um, all of the little decisions I agonised over, people will just accept because people love to watch YouTube. Mm -hmm. And the other great thing about it, unlike say music, it's not a zero sum game. Mm -hmm. People love to watch YouTube videos, and they'll watch loads of them. Um, so all of the other YouTube content creators I've spoken to, you know, like, um, uh, Bad Gear and Espencraft and who else was I speaking to the other day? They've all kind of welcomed me with open arms. It's like, yeah, mm. come on, join in. Uh, it's, it's very different from the world I was frequenting when I used to be in bands. Mm -hmm. I felt I met quite a lot of aloof slash mildly toxic people when i did that and it wasn't mm. easy but this feels much much more positive yeah um I, i've got to say though i did meet some great bands you know but i did meet some not so great bands so yeah doing this sort of thing is more about um uh, like an individual personality and a lot of people yeah. they they will forgive um your maybe your editing skills or your choice yeah. of you know comic timing or whatever because yeah. your personality overrides all of that and and that other yes. stuff will, will just come in time 
Um, yeah. You know, yeah, it, it just happens. I mean, we that's don't profess to do anything. I mean, we, we're just live streamers. That's really all we do at the moment. We have dabbled in doing other bits and bobs, but it's it's finding the time, as you say, and you know, yes. your time is going to become incredibly precious. They do sleep sometimes. That's when you, yeah. you need to get the work in, but it's like, you know, three o'clock in the morning. Do you want to be making a video or mm. editing whilst you're, you know, rocking something to sleep? So, yeah. So the, the DX7 yeah. has yeah. operators. Start them young. Start what, them young. Only, sadly, only one feedback path. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, the fixed ratio operators don't go quite down to zero hertz. Whoops, the baby. Yeah. You can't do wave shaping stuff on a Mark 1. But, um, you know, you can do some other tricks. Yeah, so it only has get... one pitch LFO as well. What is that no, about? I, I love know. warbling one operator and then keeping the other static. Yeah. And the DX7's kind of limited for that. But, yeah. But, yeah, but it was the first, you know. Yes, and it's a great instrument. Yeah. And stuff. There we go. That was my yeah. little DX7 holding a baby skit. Well, you've got, you've got, <laughs> you've got top marks in my book. Um, yeah, so... What what do you have in mind for like the next episode when you eventually get to to make so, that one? Reverbs part two, okay, is going to include. Let me let me. I'll give you a couple of previews on what it might include. I've got a circuit bent Korg Chaos pad, okay, and the reverb on that goes very grainy because it's again it's uh, clockable. Right. And what was the other one I had? I've got a really cheap really really cheap 10 pound reverb half rack mm -hmm. i bought via via um uh, a company called vice scout i thought uh, they oh, made the italian company yeah but mm. yeah it's called the er256 and that is that was the cheapest reverb i ever bought but it's actually quite good it's got some interesting reverse modes mm -hmm. so that would be in there and then after that i'm gonna start doing a few different types of videos I've got one where I look at really, really cheap synths. Uh, cheap because the UIs are bad, probably. <laughs> called, um, I think I'm going to call it Cheap Trash or Pretty Flash because okay. that's a very cl clickbaity title. Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then there'll be some more serious retrospectives on um, various, you know. Mm -hmm. 80s 90s digital synthesizers and things like that like you know maybe the n sonic story yeah definitely because i've got a lot of people i can talk to for that mm -hmm. also i'm going to uh do a v synth episode probably at Ooh. some point the rolling v synth because that is like a treasure trove i know mm. in there it's really bizarre um so yeah lots of as i said m lots of kind of odd not not the most common stuff you'll see on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't know Good. if I'll get to the point where I... If I attract enough... You know, this is all hypothetical. You've got big YouTubers who attract the, um, the new releases, you know? Mm -hmm. They get the new synths before anyone else. Yeah. Um, and I notice sometimes that when they're demoing them... Uh, they they do a great job job of demoing um, demoing them, but they mm -hmm. don't go down a little alleyway I would have. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like um, let's look at the the, the TR eight S and TR six S new FM drums update. Mm -hmm. I think I'd probably go in a slightly different direction in synthesizing some of those sounds and things like that. So I haven't quite heard on YouTube, anyone do synthesis quite the way I mm -hmm. like to explore synthesis. And I think that's going to be, it's a subtle thing, but I think it's the thing that's going to be, you know, it's going to propel me forward and hopefully give me a bit of individuality. Yeah. And that's well, think, yeah. Don't be like everybody else. Mm. Yeah. I think that's what appeals to a lot of people, isn't it? Like, mm. like Luke pop the way he, he does his videos. Yes. That, that really appealed to me. And so I stuck with him. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if like he does some stuff that I don't like. I, I will always stick with him because sure, it, yeah, he's it, great. It's, I love his unique. little oscilloscope yeah. in the yeah. yeah, 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 on top. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure if you do your own thing uh, and yeah, people it. will appreciate it, they just will. 
you know. Yeah. And I, I think obviously I, I, I lean heavily into industrial chaos. <laughs> so I kind of, but pretty industrial chaos. So I think I've got this line where I kind of push things like wait the wave shapers on Nautilus, for instance. So it's just pretty, but kind of distress sounding. Mm. That's that's the kind of sound design I like. So I think I can offer a bit of that um, to YouTube. Yeah. You know, that's barely listenable noise, but because I've put some nice chords over it or something. Yeah. Well, if you haven't already, um, if you're watching this, please do go and uh, go onto YouTube, uh, search for Magical Synth Adventure, and uh, give Paulie's channel a like, a subscribe, hit that bell. You know, do all of that stuff. Um, nice. And there's some good stuff on there at the moment, and uh, there will be much better stuff coming on. I want to know, are you, you've just acquired an Akai, was it the VX? VX90. VX90. Because uh, we had a question from I Sing the Body Electric, who remembers talking to you Yes. in the comment section of a vid about this the the s700 yeah and so is that going to be something you once you get that you'll you'll do something around definitely. that definitely if if i get an s700 or an s900 mm -hmm. apparently it's trickier on the s900 because you've got to set up six identical key groups right which is yeah. like what but um <laughs> <laughs> but i'll work it out autism for the win yeah um, indeed <laughs> and um uh once I've got that, I will definitely post a demo of that. Yeah, please do. I'm hoping it's going to kind of sound, you know, kind of hybrid. Maybe if I chuck some Profit VS waves in, mm. I can sort of get a, some ghetto Profit VS vibes <laughs> out of it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? No, I'm looking forward to that. Were well, the there any more other, uh, questions, Ben? Oh, sorry, yeah. I was Come getting... on, keep up. What are you paying I, you for? I, I was just getting carried away listening to <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> Uh, Adamski asked, <clears throat> "Do you do your own repairs and mods to any gear? Have you had to at all?" I have very little skill with soldering or anything like that. I I modded my ZX Spectrum for composite, but okay. you can actually just do that with a, a bent paperclip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I did similar on the Fairlight I, as well. I yeah. soldered two two wires. <laughs> and I gave up. I, I quit while I was ahead. Um, so I don't do mods on my gear, but I've got some great people who who um, who do my mods. You know, like there's a guy called Circuit Ben. His name is actually Circuit, Circuit Ben, ben. <laughs> 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 which is cool. And um, also, obviously, I've got quite a good relationship with CircuitBenders.co.uk, mm -hmm. who I want to to send a shout out to because. I hope. I just want to say, I hope the next six months to a year goes okay for you guys, mm. because the the little timing oscillator chip that they use in a lot of their mods, you know, to to change the speed of the clock mm. on samplers or delays or reverbs, like I did in my video, mm -hmm. they can't get them reliably, or they're very expensive due to the chip shortages. So, guys, I just hope everything goes okay for the the, the foreseeable. Yeah. Um, they obviously they circuit bend a load of load of stuff. Um, there's a KP one there, I think, with um, a modded one. So I just I love the kind of nineties ish. Uh, yeah, I've got one of them, but mine's kind of a, a slightly different color. And um, you know, they just do very very cool stuff, and they're being affected by the. Um, the chip shortages as yeah. a lot of people so i don't do any mods to my own gear but um i have people people who i can ask to help me basically yeah we, we've got somebody like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well if the chip shortage gets any worse sure yeah, quite yeah it's, yeah uh... i'm 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 already looking to see how much you can get an hour doing door-to-door -door, uh, double glazing selling. Really? Door-to-door <laughs> <laughs> -door CSAE restorations. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Dear, oh dear. Um, was there another question there, Ben? Yeah, there was. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to, to answer another question or two, you know. Cool. Um, yeah, it's from Andy again. Uh, it is, is there a synth that Paulie just had to get rid of and why? Yes. Also, is there a synth Paulie really wanted but could never find or get? Oof. 
never let's try never find or get uh so far well the yamaha dx1 of course but i think i know a couple of people who have them now so yeah I they're supposed kind of... to be rare but like nearly everybody i know has got one <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you you only know me ken <laughs> so hey, I, I had two <laughs> ever since i saw it was have. it in um let's make lots of money from the pet yeah. shop always on top of the pops with that dx1 and the starship control kind of panel yeah. so I'm I'm just gonna pop around to one of yours at some point You're and, always uh, welcome. and geek out. Um it has to be at night and we have yeah. to turn the lights off. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I could what? just see the panel in, in all its glory and then just leave me alone with it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that is a box of Kleenex, there you My go. Pressure. <laughs> yeah. Damn. No, um so that's that's obviously a bit of a white whale, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I think there's probably some also some kind of rare ish um I was just talking um, today with uh, one of the people on the forum about prototype synths, you know, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like the prototype VX90 is all black and looks like an S612. I wouldn't mind Mm -hmm. one. But, yes, so a synth that I had to get rid of... um, I just actually got rid of my Corgo 1W. Okay. Okay. just because I've got the Nautilus now right. and doing some tests I found actually the wave shaping oscillators when you put the same waveforms through were pretty much identical and I just ran out of space I think space is an issue with with lots of kind of synth purchases mm. when you get to the the point that I have you know I've got my blooming t- six tier stand and stuff <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that and it's like no more space so i had to let the o1w go and i think it's just because the functionality is duplicated uh a bit by the well completely by the nautilus mm. i don't think of oh the other one um i had a poly 800 i let go because none of the buttons worked <laughs> and I, I bought it very cheaply yeah. and i only really liked one one sound on it actually there was a nice bell sound on the poly 800 um but with those buttons not working it was very frustrating and it was before i met you know all these cool other synthy people yeah i think i made about 30 quid on it though so (laughs) So i could probably pick pick up another one at some point if i wanted to desperately i think that came here Hmm? i think that came here they really? had a poly 800 come in and the guy goes, all the buttons don't work. So it put new microphones well, in it. Well, that was, that was probably the, <laughs> the, the poly that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, our resident uh, FM expert, Dr. Manny Fernandez, uh, is asking, uh, you mentioned the zero frequency wave shaping and what other yeah. FM tricks are your favourites on Mod 7 stroke Nautilus? There is a book, right? And it's designed for the Psi 77 slash TG 77. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with those mm-hmm. Yamaha. Um, but it's called the Psy Programming Guide, and it's by a guy called Herbert Jensen, Mm -hmm. who I later emailed years ago and thanked. Um, So there's um, a load and load of tricks in there. Obviously, the Zero Freak Wave Shaping is one of them. There's things you can do with um, uh, stacks of of operators, (laughs) and detuning them and i think really to get anywhere with fm you have to learn two or three different recipes Mm -hmm. Uh, so you need to learn to it's kind of actually it's kind of like a um an autistic person learning to mimic non-autistic body language and things like that imagine i'm an fm synth trying to mimic (laughs) right um so you have to learn how to make a saw wave out of out of a couple of operators, a one operator and a feedback, uh, or a square wave. Mm -hmm. And then you have to kind of learn these basic building blocks and then learn how to make a few of them and detune them and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I would recommend uh, Herbert Jensen's Psy Programming Guide um, to anyone. I think the big difference with the 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 TG77, which I haven't seen on the Nautilus, is the looping envelopes. I'm not too sure Nautilus has that. 
I'm gonna so you'd probably have to use LFOs. But I've got a brilliant um water drops patch where you have five different operators all pinging the different looping envelope going into one uh, carrier. So five modulators into one carrier. And it gives you this plinky plonky water drop sound, mm -hmm. um, which is absolutely brilliant. I was, I was well proud of that because I just spent, for some reason, I had nothing to do. That There won't be any of that anytime soon because I'm going to mm. have a lot. <laughs> I had nothing to do for a few weeks. So I was like, I'm going to become a Psy 77 programming ninja. <laughs> and I've got a free bank available um, if anyone wants it. So ask me on the group for my, my Psy 77 bank. Um, yeah. But yeah, chorusing, of course, if you use a very slow, not completely, um, not completely 0%, maybe 0.2%, uh, 0, 0.2 up to, yeah, around 0.2, because 0.500 is a little too fast, isn't it? Around 0.2 uh, hertz. Um, operator, you'll get a bit of chorus in going through whatever sample you send it through. So, right. on mod seven as well, you can ring mod or wave shape ring mod or something else as well, which puts you in Casio VZ territory as well. So, mm -hmm. I haven't explored it all yet, but what I'd say is the last trick if you're going to wave shape a sample, put a filter in between. So get your guitar or, or whatever sample you've got, run it into a filter, and then run that into the wave shaper. And you'll bring up different kind of harmonics than you'd, than you'd get just out of the sample. And then mess with the filter and the wave shaper for interaction, and you'll get some cool results. And it won't just be noise, because people... They take a piano sample, run it through a wave shaper, get noise, and they think it's useless. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that was the big problem with the core Go 1W. It was like, this wave shaping's useless. We just want to, you know, play um, uh, big kind of pad sounds with, like, mandolins trilling or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah. that's a big stumbling block, I think. So put a filter in between your sample and your wave shaper. Nice. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that book, and people have been asking for it in the chat. Well, I found, um, and hopefully this Herbert Jensen's site yeah That's Herbert is his own website herbertjensen.de, and yeah. there it is as a downloadable PDF free of charge. So yes. um, let me it see. It is if I... amazing. I learned everything about FM synthesis. There you you know, popped it into the chat. Hopefully, people will be able to click on that, and um, yeah. I'll bookmark that one myself. Um, I, the one is I don't have. That, that's my next thing. Is is the SY range? I've got an SY. Okay. Uh, what's that one? Twenty two. I've got the SY twenty two. Oh yeah, I've got the thirty five. Yeah, quite... which they're, they're cool little things. But it's I want what I really want is a ninety nine. Oh. Because I, I, I go big or go home. <laughs> uh, and, and Manny keeps telling me how amazing this you know these things are, and I've never Very really cool. dabbled with the seventy seven or the ninety nine. I've got I've also got a TG. Five. I've got the TG55 and the 500, yes. which were the, the, the rack versions of the 55 I need you to and the sample 85. me something from the 55, actually. Oh, I'll have to dig it out. It's uh, kind of tough. Yeah, but yeah. Just a waveform no at some yeah, point. No problem. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah, so if you want that, uh, that PDF, yeah, it's there. Or a 99. Links in the chat. I'll probably stick it in the description later on. Um, were there any other questions for Paulie before um, we say goodbye? Let me have a look. Um, I, think I couldn't see anything there. Hopefully, um, my answers have been sufficient. Yeah, and if not, of course, <laughs> Paulie is a very active member of the Prosynth Network Facebook group. So, as I said Always before, I'm in it with some in. Yeah, <laughs> get, what, get some in. There. What Vsynth have you got, Paulie? Which which it's one? It's just the uh, the original keyboard. Yeah. Two point oh one right. with a D beam. With a D beam, but here's the thing you might like, and I don't know. I don't know if this is a legal grey area, but I found online the original, the original PCM waveforms of the D50. Oh uh, yeah. That I then loaded into the VSynth, ah. so I don't need the D50 card. I only got two oscillators, but it was kind of enough to get some D50ish flavors. But nice. 
as I said, I don't know about the legality of that because that is copyrighted work, isn't it? Those well, yeah, those the samples, samples, aren't they? But I've got to say, they sound lovely in the in the V synth. Yeah, I think it was just the raw PCM ripped straight out of the right. I I recognise like you know the um the Jean Michel Michel Jarre's um little loop, you know. Dun, 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 oh them. yes. Yeah. Revolutions, is it? Um, so, uh, yeah, it's cool. I am. Um, I really enjoy the V synth. It's something to get lost in. Yeah. Yeah. Graphic. Sorry, I'm just struggling. My, my my. Oh, there you go. My my left channel decided to on my ears, and I thought, oh this God, somebody. By the way, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no, but we're back in the room. Back well, in the hey. room. Naked. <laughs> Imagine with a couple of teetotalers as well. Yeah. Just there with, well, I should have put it in a brown paper bag. That would, that would have been. <laughs> well, look, um, I think our our hour is up, and um, sure. it's been absolutely brilliant having you on the show and chatting and learning waffled. i hope it's no, been okay of course it has it's exactly what it's all we do we just waffle it's the home uh, of waffle we are <laughs> we're, we're waffle house i thought that was bad like sorry <laughs> no but listen um first of all best of luck with the channel Thank um you. and best of luck with the music but of course most of all best of luck with the new arrival any day yeah. now keeping your fingers crossed for you Baby and, uh, and and do yeah do let us know when the happy event occurs and uh yeah and we'll we'll give it a give post um a yeah post a pic and we'll share it around and we'll show oh, yeah, the show. Yeah. but listen thank you ever so much and um long may you continue doing what you're doing because you're doing a fantastic job thank and we you. love what you do and um yeah keep keeping you know if you've got any questions for paulie after this say just get into the facebook group and yeah. uh, drop them in there um so fantastic thank you ever so much have a great weekend and lots thank of you. love to your wife and fingers crossed and best yes. of luck yeah Cheers. take care paulie yeah. See you again soon. Bye. 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 And there they go. Poorly Alex Bow, everyone. My my left sorry, my left channel keeps dropping out and it's really flipping annoying me now. Amazing knowledge of all, loads of different synthesis yeah. systems there. Like it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. What is going Ah, oh there's the problem. Ah. Sorry, I thought it was there. He said pointing at himself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Problem in chair, not in computer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, I've got. I don't know whether I. I thought it was the, the plug on my headphones, and I had just visions of me having to chop it off and re resolder that. But actually, because I've got it on an extension, I think it might be the extension lead that's a bit iffy. Uh, or it might be the interface. It might just be the. Oh, it is. Oh no. Oh no, because do you remember I got? Um, I had my headphone socket uh, or headphones plugged into my interface. And I pulled it out, and it left the tip of the headphone so uh, plug oh, in yeah. in the yeah. socket. And Focusrite were absolutely brilliant. And I told them, I said, where can I buy? Or I asked them where, where I could buy a um, new socket from. And they said, don't worry, we'll send you one. So they sent it and, my, you know, unsoldered it, put the new one in. And obviously my soldering skills aren't very good. No. So that's going out again. Or it could be a reason to get a new audio interface. I take these opportunities. I do like those opportunities. When something oh, you, breaks, you, you either fix reasons. it or. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, seeing as I've just bought, uh, and uh, well, hopefully arriving tomorrow. Let me just check mm -hmm. my tracking. I've got a, a new Mac coming tomorrow. I've got a Mac M1, um, MacBook Pro Ooh. coming, which I'm I'm going to. Um, the way I see it, I, I kind of see it as like a a transitioning step towards maybe what you guys are well i know you've you've got one and you're planning on getting one aren't you mac studio i am thinking about it well i know what you're thinking about think things. no more just go yeah. in <laughs> you, just your go thinking in. very rapidly becomes doing well we just bought that <laughs> yeah. new telly and i'm just very frightened at the moment um, mm, yeah yeah the money's going out the door like there's a leak yeah but all you need is a couple of you know CS80s or 2600s and uh, yeah that's a point I've been paid for the last two yet there you go mm. oh I think about it harder then yeah <laughs> but no I'm excited to get into the whole Apple Silicon world and see what that's involving yes. anyway um, what do we, oh, we do some news now shall we oh I, yeah. I, I see I noticed Kent put his um, Bob Moog Foundation t-shirt on he's uh, you, yeah well I was looking like a, a mid 90s bloody um 
gym tosser. Gym tosser. Well, you didn't have your hair in the bun, so you yeah, were okay. I, I was looking. I, was, I thought, oh god, this is horrible. <laughs> Oh, dear, no, oh dear. got rid of it. Um, so let's mm. do some news because there has there has been a little bit of news. Um, I think I probably the we we'll start with the big one first because we've probably all got something to say about this. Let's do um, let's do the the demo video first, and then we'll talk about um, the thing itself. So here we go. It is official. Yamaha have released Modi X Plus. There you go. Modi X Plus is with us. Thank you, Wagyu. Super knobs can't. Th uh, so super knob throb can't melt D beams. <laughs> uh, honestly, if ever a synth was made for for um, British humour, it's it's the yeah. Modi X with its super knob, um, which you know by, by all accounts, and Manny keeps telling me the stuff that you can do with that knob is rather good. Um, <laughs> but I hear Manny t t tells all the ladies that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I mean, look, Modi X Plus, it's what's what's plus about it is that it's had some extra memory thrown at it, uh, particularly, you know, it's, it's kind of brought it up to current montage levels, but I, I don't think that will be current montage levels for long. I think, you know, the rumour is that there's going to be a montage plus or something along those lines as well coming soon. Um, so, yeah, Modi X is out... Uh, and available to order now there are three versions the the six the seven and the eight so 61 76 and 88 weighted keys and they still haven't put bloody after touch in there um, and I, it was the first thing i went to see why i mean is it too much now to, like channel after touch should just be standard across the board why is this not on this synthesizer particularly because fm you know is such an expressive form if you use things like that or is that just me is it just me <laughs> no i think feel free it, to jump in I, I think it's quite ridiculous it hasn't got any form of after touch on it at all because we're we're all so used to using that now it, it, it mm. you know certain sounds you lean into them because you expect yeah. them to do something else when you lean in I just think it's a really odd decision. It's obviously for financial reasons, but is it though? I mean, does it cost that much? I, I, I can't imagine it costing that much for channel like after touch, but I, I just don't know why they've missed it. Off. I mean, so one of the things that was half expected on this uh, in some of the internet forums around the place were was um, the a the fabled ANX thing. Whatever ANX is, I mean, we, we're, we're speculating that it's going to be. Um, an ANX engine from you know similar to the AN engines of the the VA stuff in the 90s 
And so lots of people say, oh, it's going to be in there. Well, why would you do that? Because you're going to eat into the montage market because the montage really is everything. Whereas the Modi X has always been focused on the FM, back it up with AWM and, you know, give it some of the the, the, the sound shaping capabilities and the touchscreen and, of course, the super knob. So why would you do that? Why would you cannibalize your own market? And I've heard people say, oh, well, you know, the montage has got aftertouch. So it was clearly, you know, this is just, whittling things away to get the price but you're not going to eat into the montage market just because you've got aftertouch in there so it just it seems like a really odd emission and i was you know i've been criticizing korg for not putting it into things like their wave state op six and stuff and i always thought oh well at least I, I, my faith in yamaha will be no it hasn't 1500 quid for the six about 1750 for the seven and a cool two grand for the eight with the weighted keyboard thoughts on your I shopping like list it. i like it i'd be interested it, if i'd have known about this before i'd bought this key lab thing i, I might have gone for the 88 uh, Mode X instead of the Key Lab, you know, put the extra in because you're getting so much more. Mm. Um, but I am kind of interested in the six because I think it would make a great addition to my live setup. You know, get rid of the little MX49 I've got mm. and replace that with a six. It, it's a really powerful machine and it's quite lightweight. I should imagine the six one anyway, so it's not going to kill us carrying it to gigs. I imagine that montage to be like <laughs> like a mm. tank. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's... Would the aftertouch bother me so much live? I don't really use it no. that much in, in a live environment. I've got to be honest, it's, if, if anything's going to be tweaked, it's going to be on the, the few controllers I've got available to me. I don't tend to use aftertouch live. I still think it should have it, but mm. it wouldn't, wouldn't bother me so much in the live yeah. live scenario really yeah i think, so we, I, think the, yeah. I think it's good i think obviously there's going to be a big montage upgrade soon as well um oh, somebody is. mentioned in the chat like is there nothing you know like uh, uh, to people who's got the the original is a no upgrade path no. for that but it'd it's have hardware. to be hardware wouldn't it with yeah. the, with the well, as manny points everything. out it's now kind yeah. of hardware compatible with the montage is right up. You know, they've they've given it montage spec, yeah. um, but I, which kind of leads me to believe that w whether we'll see it sooner or, or later, I don't know. But I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to see like a new montage uh, at yeah. some point soon. Um, I mean, as far as FM yeah. synthesis is concerned, there's there's little to touch this out there. Obviously, you've got Korg's Op Six and you've got Korg's. Um, implementation within like the Nautilus and stuff but that's six operator FM this is eight plus it's got the AWM stuff in there and I've heard some of Manny's uh, patches for these they are incredible they really are and if you haven't go and check out Yamaha um, the, the Yamaha synth channel on YouTube and there's some NAM stuff where Manny's doing some incredible stuff I think this what this does this particular thing does do is it wins the prize for most pointless comparison table on the planet because everything about these synths is identical across the board except for the number of keys and the cost everything else uh, uh, forgive me if i've got that wrong but i've looked through that table and so they've made this massive table page of specs and the only difference is this bit here this bit here about the keyboard and of course the glaring error of course is the the bit across the middle there it says aftertouch no 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 it's like you know it's the amy winehouse of um of keyboards <laughs> this um but apart from you know the physical dimensions in the the keyboard it's all the same so it's 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 a wonderfully spec synthesizer in every other way 128 note polyphony on the awm2 128 note polyphony on the fm um 16 part multi-timbral audio inputs audio outputs 5.67 gig uh, of waveforms in there, over 2,000 uh, performances, 18 types of filter, a metric ton of effects. Um, the, you got the, you know, of course, you got the super knob, you got the seven inch TFT screen, 
yeah i mean it's it's a well specified synth and i think you know for 15 to 2000 pounds is is a reasonable thing um but kent what do you reckon uh, no this isn't in my domain at all. no no um i don't know why i think because i've already got so much stuff that's already covering a lot of what this does already mm -hmm. um so you know i don't know i must admit for a cut down machine costing 1500 quid it's like really 1500 quid you want one that's got all the whistles bells and nuts and bolts surely how money? much is montage because that's not cheap is it no no i don't think it's cheap I must admit. no but 1500 quid for a, you know what is essentially a you know a cutbacker like, really? but then of course we are in this day and age where you know parts and components are either rare or no. more expensive yamaha of course have, do have you know their own uh manufacturer I'm, I'm assuming they do i'm pretty sure they still do a lot of their own chip manufacture yeah, okay. but that could be you know that could be that in in there i mean it's it's not awful i mean it's it's a it's a it's a, a well-specified synthesizer it's lacking sorry. In the yeah. montage uh the montage 8 is about 3600 i just had a quick okay. quick search so so that's 1600 more than the Modi X8. Mm. Or Modi yeah. X plus 8, that we call it. Now. It's got better converters or something on the Modi yeah, X, it's gonna, it? yeah. They haven't up upped them in this new Modi X version, have they? So, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if a new montage comes out, what that retails at, and then see what the price differential is there. Mm. Uh, yeah. Maybe, you know, 3.6 is, is now going to be the price of the 7. Not I think as a rule, with a machine that does that many kind of sounds, and I mean, it sounded great and everything like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But for me, if it hasn't got aftertouch, well, I mean, mm. p particularly if it hasn't got poly aftertouch, because it, it's poly aftertouch will go home mm. for me anyway. Um, so maybe if they did a, a nice, you know, cheaper rack version of it or something like that. And yeah. Plug the eye through into it. Nobody makes rack versions of these anymore, do they? I that used to be the thing, didn't it? So frustrating. 80s and 90s. I love rack versions. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> we were trying to get... Because nobody's yeah. studio got bigger, didn't they? Exactly. You know, and you end up running out of room constantly. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. So, Modi X Plus, it is now official. It's out, and you can buy it now. Uh, 1500 17 15 2 grand are the rough prices for the six and the seven and the eight yeah. uh yamaha.com uh you can get more information in the demonstration videos and i'm sure we'll be hearing more of that i mean you know the, the modi x has a lot of fans it's been around for a while now it's got a lot of good fans i'm still waiting to hear back from my my friend at yamaha uk i'm, I'm hoping that the delay is because they want to send me one of these yes. to have a look at I, nah, probably not going to happen but who knows <laughs> i might fall in love with it and i might oh, completely change my mind yeah quite yeah <laughs> yes anyway um so that's modi excel uh, let's do a seamless link to something else uh that is fm related before i do that i've just gone and shut a tab down i didn't want to shut so um do you remember the mega fm this little uh box from twisted electrons um so it was basically the uh 2612 uh chip which was, I think, the same one they used in things like the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, if you're American. Um, it was using a lot of those things. And it was one of those four operator, eight algorithm, um, little box, but with with all of the um, controls, you know, kind of exposed as, as faders and knobs, and you could really dig into it. Well, there's going to be a Mark II, and it's not out yet, and there are no demo videos of it as such, although this... Um, I don't think that's the I think that's the original one but you can see on there the you know there's lots of controls to actually you know get right into the weeds of this um, but the, the main difference is that you it now comes with um, a slightly different version of the 2612 which is the 3438 version of the chip but you can now remove those FM chips and replace them with similar chips of you know in that family of chips so you can now sort of mess around with the internals as well which is quite interesting and th these were retailing for under 500 quid and they're, they're kind of hand put together by i believe it's a british guy living out in france 
Um, but uh, I, for a while, it was between this and the XFM, and I went with the XFM mainly on a budgetary thing. But I, I kind of this this seems kind of nice. Any thoughts on this? I, I don't think it's for me personally, but I, I'm I'm really intrigued uh, of what you could do with it because it's got that really like lo-fi retro kind of fm sound going on and with having all mm. the controls on the surface but what would you gain by swapping the chips wouldn't wouldn't that like would, would what would I, you gain from that well I, sure. it says it says it says here in the blurb um let me just bring this up here um so it says here in the blurb the updated version is identical in appearance and functionality but we include a pair of YM3438 chips instead of the 2612. This was a variant of the 2612 that is identical in functionality and was featured in the Mega Drive 2, so it's kind of like the updated version. Um, the circuit layer has also been updated to grant access to the FM chips with minimal dis disassemble. Not disassemble. Um, <laughs> indeed, the chips are now socketed and accessible by removing the bottom panel. Uh, this allows you to uh, install alternate FM chips such as the 2612 or modern alternatives or even custom sound chips wow. you can also mix different versions of fm chips as there are two slots that can be configured individually so i think that's the answer to your question there is that you can mix and match and mess around which yeah. is an unusual you don't normally get that in a synth yeah you can add a a sound card or something you know like yeah, the um, expansion, the expansion thing. things yeah, yeah. yeah thing. but yeah to actually mess around with the, the chips, that's, that's kind of cool. It is. It yeah. is. It's interesting. Yeah. It's probably more things for people to break then. of its design. Yeah, it, do, it does feel like that, doesn't it? So you they go, yeah, we, we just put a door on the bottom. Yeah. And they can do it themselves. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because there is a lot of, um, there's a you know, there's a big community around those kind of, mm. those FM chips, because there's a lot of nostalgia attached to them as well, because of the whole gaming industry. Well, yeah. Um, using those. You so, could make it really unique to you, couldn't you, it, with your combination, and uh, yeah. obviously then your own sounds programmed on top. of Absolutely, that, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, you, yeah. It, I'd like to. See, I, I want to. You know, I want to see one of these in action and hear it because it, that might have just swung it. Uh, just the fact that you can mess around, but it, and, and the firmware will like, uh, work identically on on both versions. So um, same audio circuitry, same analog distortion as the Mark One. So. It's not really a replacement. It is, like you say, it is a progression, um, which, yeah. which is nice. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So available soon, uh, starting this month, apparently. So uh, twistedelectrons.com. Thank you, Mr. Brooks, for posting the link in the chat. It's there if you want it. Of course, it'll be uh, in the description a couple of days, uh, in a couple of days' time when I can pull my finger out my backside and do all of that chaptering and linking thing. But it will be there, so uh, have a look. Um, that's Twisted FM. Sorry, Mega FM from Twisted Electrons. Um, would you like some more FM? You know, I've I've got all all the control here. You've got no is choice. He's talking to himself now, Ben. This is uh, this has become know. yeah. I've this lost is... the will to live here. Oh, oh, shut up. Very very <laughs> FM orientated all of a sudden. So the legend that is um, Katsunori UJ um, has done a, a, a demo video of one of my all time. It's still you know one of my all time favourites since. And I just thought I'd give it a plug on here because it's it's typical Katsunori uh, stuff. Really beautiful playing, just going through sounds and, and really showing it off. And, of course, it is uh, the one and the only Yamaha DX5, uh, which he's demonstrating here for us. Um, and I don't care that I can't understand what he's saying. Oh, buffer. Had to start with something like that. He is feeding it through, obviously, a chorus and a bit of reverb. It does sound good. Though. Tell me that doesn't sound good. It sounds great, it, but it sounds like... It, it, it sounds like Whitney Houston and stuff, doesn't it? it, it's, it that, it's that vibe, so... There are... I mean, yes, there are obviously there are a lot more sounds that... Some stringy sounds here. It's 
It's one of those ones if you just listen to it with the headphones on, it really does sound amazing. Mark this for 50 quid. <laughs> I love this piano. I'm going to go back to this. Here we go. I love this piano sound. But anyway, um, enough of that. I just thought I'd indulge. Like piano. Yeah, uh, here's another piano. Um, <laughs> I think everyone's a fan of uh, MusicTrack.jp yeah. and what Katsunori does on 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 this channel. It's just absolutely brilliant. He does some great stuff, and like I say, I absolutely do not give a monkey's left nipple or the hair upon it that I cannot understand. <laughs> What he's because his enthusiasm and his passion just come through. It's one of those. It's a global language and it's just incredible. But yeah, go and have a check that out. It's one of my favourite synths. It sits there behind me. And I love it. I t every time I turn it on, it's just great. But I do need to bring it into Kent for a service. Um, some of the oh. buttons are getting a little bit. Come on, stay, stay. There you go. So, uh, um, but it is a fantastic thing. And of course, I, I've got you to thank for that, Ben, as well, because you put me in touch with the. The person I bought it from. So mm, I've, it's all I've your played fault. on your DX5 Ooh. many times. Yeah. Did you wash your hands after? Yeah, yeah, I needed to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful instrument, and I'd even go as far to say is that I kind of prefer it to the DX1 because it's not as unwieldy as the DX1, which you yeah. know is a beast. But this is this is kind of it's got the DX7 sleekness, but the the sonic power of, of the DX1. There's just something about it. I really love yeah. it. First time I saw that uh, from the person who you bought it from, mm. I, I didn't even know they existed. Oh, right. and, and it was like when it was new. Mm. So when I walked into his studio and seen <laughs> what looks like a, 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 a DX7 on steroids, yeah. and it didn't, it didn't have the membrane buttons as well. That was right. like, yes. It was just like it was jaw dropping, you know, because yeah. it looked so impressive. It was, uh, and it sounded amazing. It does it, it, it? I think for a lot of people, it's difficult to imagine how good these things sounded at the time, because mm. yeah, everybody's gone back and said, "Oh yeah, I prefer the warmth of this," or uh, uh, but it was just a massive leap in uh, authenticity because mm -hmm. that's a lot of back then what we wanted was a authentic sound in things yeah. we wanted things to sound like real pianos we wanted things to sound like real flutes and the 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 object of the game now seems to be creating your own individual thing but mm. when when like the dx when i first heard the dx5 it was like yeah that mm. is really really it, impressive it has the same da's um, as the DX1, which are still the the BA nine double two ones that you find in the DX7, these twelve bit, and the way it does twelve bit, it, it, they're twelve bit converters, but they kind of do fifteen bit uh, with the compounding. And but the the DX1 and the DX5 DAs were hand picked, so they literally, when they got a box full of chips, somebody would sit there and plug it in and listen to the the noise level. And the the least noisy would go into a special box that would then go off to be put in the ones and the fives, so that they do sound a little nicer than the right, DX7 yeah. itself, which yeah. of course sounds you know, pretty nice anyway. Yeah. yeah. There you Definitely. go. Um, so anyway, yeah. Um, MusicTrack.jp. If you go to the um, MusicTrack.jp is the the YouTube channel. I'm sure most people have got it subscribed and uh, in their favourites list. Go and go and have a listen to that uh right so can we do a seamless link to something else i don't think we can actually um there is a new so, do you remember last week i i kind of showed early onset uh, symptoms of early onset <laughs> alzheimer's yeah. Yeah. well i just thought I, they no surely arturia haven't just released this, this well they did actually release something new and i can guarantee that they released something new and it's a a new effect um called dist as which is the the prefix because it's a distortion effect um, but it's called cold fire and it sounds a little bit like this
it's quite a potent sounding thing that i i downloaded it but i have to admit i haven't really played around with it I a have, lot go on then tell I, us I, I haven't played around with it loads but uh it was one of them i was like uh, i've got loads of distortions i'm not you know i'm not really fussed and because i've got like the effects collection mm -hmm. uh I thought I'm not going to bother with this. I'll, I'll wait till F FX Collection Four comes out and it'll be <laughs> included. And that. I, I, this is like more like a preview to me, you know, of mm. what I'm going to get like in six months' time. But uh, I downloaded the demo, and then after about half an hour of playing with it, I bought it because it, it is possibly the most configurable distortion you're gonna have in a plugin it, it's it, you can do if you can imagine a distortion sound that you want i reckon you can do it with this because mm. it's just so controllable e everything it, you can have uh bit depth reduction you know valve tubes uh lfos you can crossfade between the, it's it's like there's one distortion on one side and one on the other you can crossfade between yeah. the two of them and there's tons and tons of presets it's also got like a really good filter in there if you go through the presets i think that'll convince you to buy it because the there's some amazing things going on in them presets where mm. the distortion just is on the attack and then the filter kicks in and, and muffles the sound and if you feed that through a big reverb, you, you, you're just off, you know? It's, yeah. It, it's, I think it's great. And, and I think if you've got FX Collection 3, you can get it for like 29 quid. So yeah, that's yes. not too bad. Uh, I, I'm not sure I'd want to pay like 99 for it mm. uh, with already having the FX Collection, you know? So I think they've done the right thing by dropping it to 29. Yeah. But it, it's... It's it's really good, I think. I, I mean, everybody likes different stuff, but I, for me, this will do everything I want. Distorted, mm. I will probably now run through this because it's it's fairly easy to use. It's got some great distortion effects in it, uh, and it's so configurable, like with its LFOs and its tempo syncing and yeah i think you could mm. do anything that you could imagine with this really yeah i mean you've got a whole bunch of you know so your analog effects that you can drop in so tape tube transistor transformer yeah. germanium and fourth then you've got the digital stuff the rectifiers bit crushers bit inverters wave folders and wave shapers. you could just mix mix and match and move between yeah, them can't you it doesn't um, have to be extreme as well you can use it just to excite a signal yeah you know, like a vocal exciter yeah <laughs> It's got quite, you know, don't don't just think, oh, it's got to be industrial heavy stuff that you put through this. It, it, it can be as subtle as you like, you know. It, it, it's good. It's yeah. good. They've done a good job of it, again. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Spong, you're a recent convert to FX Collection. Is this one you're going to add to your arm? Um, yeah, awesome I might do, arm? actually, yeah. I might do, just, just to be able to do some experimenting. And, mm. and oh, yeah, you'll, you'll have nice. fun with that. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I spend far too much time playing with lovely smooth chords and stuff like that. Like, it's, it's, time, it's time to rip it up a bit. It's nice to mess things up. You know, sprinkle it? dog turds around the garden. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's got this. It's, it's a lovely interface. Um, mm. Again, it's you know that sort of kind of very flat Arturi interface. You know, I think Pigments was the first to use this kind of thing, and then it's kind of filtered through all of their, their other original stuff it's very clear very you know obvious what you're doing this bit in the middle here you know this um, where you can sort of it's kind of like a color map thing that's very much like something that uh, is in reason in propeller head reason where they did something similar but not with distortion but they did it with drum patterns and you could sort of navigate this visual map and it would it would then sort of randomize drum patterns so um yeah maybe not hugely original but that doesn't still... change like it, it's always that pattern but say if you yeah. like reduce the bit depth on say like the the left hand side mm. and you can see it going more and more pixelated yeah or if you bring up the 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 warmth it'll go redder or you know you know you know it's it's quite yeah. cool but yeah I, I don't i don't get the reason why it is that particular pattern no <laughs> i don't know if you can change it 
don't know. Yeah, I'll, have, I'll actually have to use it. I, you know, I did a bit of a bend on that one. I, was, I downloaded yeah. it but didn't use it. <laughs> um, so Arturia, it's called Cold Fire, Dist Cold Fire. Um, it's available separately. So if you own FX Collection already, depending on which version you own or some other stuff, you'll get a discounted price. I think it's normally uh, 99 euros, this um, 49 or 29, depending on what you have in your catalogue. Um, so there you go. That's Arturia. Um, let's see. Oh, this one was this was quite exciting uh, for me because I'm a big fan of Toon Tracks' um, Superior Drummer. And when I saw the first like advert for this, it said Superior, and then in lowercase September. And I thought, oh, they're releasing a new version of Superior Drummer in September. But no, it's just the their name for uh, this month's promotions and the fact that they've got a new library coming out. And this is one that anybody that loves 80s drums is going to absolutely wet themselves over. <laughs> um, I'm so excited for this. It's coming out on September 20th. It's um, the Hugh Padgham SDX expansion uh, for Superior Drummer. Um, Hugh has worked with tons and tons of people. The ones that they pick out here, of course, are Phil Collins, Genesis, String, uh, String, String, Sting, String. even uh, <laughs> the Police, and many, many others besides. You know, Peter Gabriel and that. Um, Hugh has worked with the best of them and is one of the most highly regarded sort of producers and engineers uh, out there. And he's recorded um, a, a massive sample library uh, for Superior Drummer Three. Um, and yeah, there's not there's not a huge amount in terms of the demos, and I think the demos they ha have put up are so similar to some of his biggest hit records that he's worked on, such as um, Sting's "If I Ever Lose My Faith" and uh, some, uh, "In the Air Tonight" as well. Um, but I don't want to play the demos because I'm worried that we'll get a copyright strike because they are very similar, but just ever so slightly off. Um, but I know how uh, aggressive the, the algorithm is. Suffice to say, if you go to toontrack.com and just... But what's what's nice about these is that a lot of the... Um, so if you look at the, the SDX expansion packs with Superior Drummer, they're either really heavy metal and rock-oriented or they're um, kind of indie, custom, vintage type things. And there's not a lot of kind of just good straight-down-the-middle stuff. Uh, apart from when they do a signature pack with you know, sorry, Hugh Padgham's one um, and there's a couple of other guys. There's the Hansa Studio ones, which is quite nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to get these, I mean, Hugh Padgham's sound is the sound, you know, is is up there with the sound of Trevor Horn as, as being that sound of that decade, really. So this, I think, this is really great. And to be able to then use this on an e-drum kit to get those sounds is just, just going to be amazing. We're going to have to set the drums up again. <laughs> going to have to do it. Um, do you guys use drum sample libraries in, in any of your work? Uh, I, I tend to mainly use drum machine sounds. You know, I don't really mm. use... Uh, unless I'm doing a track for the band. And then <clears throat> I've got to try and replicate something like the sound that was on the original record so this would be quite handy for me seeing as he was on a lot of the stuff that we'd be covering but this has electronic sounds in it as well yeah yeah so yeah you got a bit of both here because obviously like you say you know it's that era it's definitely yeah I, think yeah. It, yeah I haven't got a superior drummer um but this could be the thing that makes me <laughs> makes me buy mm. in because it would be useful for me it's a great it's a great um, mm. program Kent, you uh, you a fan of this sort of thing? I am. I, I never actually get around to using it very much because it's one of these things where I'm trying to break the mold, and this is obviously one of the type of things. Because, like, you know, if, if I do a track and it's got rhythm on it, people would think it couldn't have been done by him. It's got rhythm <laughs> on it. What the hell? So, um, yeah, so it's all part of the breaking the mold. So, um, mm. Yeah, but I'm, I like the idea of this particular genre of drums. Yeah. Indeed, thing, you know, it is that classic, you know, that mm. sound, the big, yeah. reverby, drummy. I mean, I, I really want to play the demo. I'm just frightened that it's so close to the, the things because they've obviously tried to capture that sound, you know, that he's famous for. Um, yeah, 
We'll but, sing over the top of it. Yes. Well, um, but no, I mean, it really does have that. It has space. That's the one thing I loved about his drum sounds was the space yeah. um, to breathe. They could be big and powerful, but not dominating, not really sort of compressed and in your face. There was there was air around it. But mm. uh, um, Andy was asking in the chat, uh, is this my favourite plug-in for drums? For, for acoustic drums, absolutely, hands down. Um, this is the one that I use with my e-drum kit. That's that's what I use because it just sounds so good. And the the detail in the sampling, I mean, they really go um, to town with um, the detail of the sampling. So, yeah, mm. definitely. Um, Ian's uh, in there saying he, you know, he likes Modo Drum. Modo Drum is very good as well. But I just think it lacks just a little bit of that uh, what's the depth, I think. Depth. Lacks depth my wife says um but um modo drum obviously takes up a lot less space because it's part modeled as well as samples so um it's, they're both good but yeah um my favorite kit actually uh on the the standard you know the factory library of, of superior drummer 3 which is immense but my favorite kit is the phil collins kit so it'll be interesting to see compare the two um you know those big kind of concert toms and that big gated sound which is just mm. lovely lovely anyway um that is out september 20th um as an sdx and i think the price of the sdx is now used to be 159 i think they've gone up to 169 euros now so they're not cheap and the only ones they ever put on offer are the the lesser you know the, the less popular ones the ones that maybe uh like there's a prog rock one which i don't think gets a huge amount of love um I've got the custom and vintage one. That was quite a nice little pack. Um, but yeah, they, they either go like really heavy rock metal or sort of refined things. And not. I think this, this will fill the gap nicely. Mm. There we go. Superior Drummer 3, a uh, new expansion pack on September 20th. We mentioned uh, Modo Drum there. Of course, that's made by IK Multimedia and uh, ik multimedia have uh, made an announcement this week uh, about a new addition to their wonderful iLoud uh, monitor range mm. i use iLoud micros here and they they just continue to impress me every time um then they had the um the iLoud mtms which uh, were a much bigger speaker but had you know wonderful dsp in them and um, they even recently we spoke about the um the Dolby Atmos kit. Well, now they've introduced um, a new one called iLoud Precision, and these are really sort of top of the range things. Um, I had a little sneak preview of these, and they are just amazing. Um, different sizes um, for different functions and uh, different studio sizes and what have you. They are not cheap. They start at 900 euros for one speaker. You will get um, the ARC um, configuration stuff in there as well. But these are really kind of best in class, uh, a lot of what they do. Um, comes with, uh, say, the ARC calibration, the X monitor software uh, with different monitor emulations. So you can, you know, if you want to, you, I guess, you know, if you want to, the, the Yamaha NS10 experience, there's probably a model for that, and you can do that. There's lots to, to uh, go on here certainly on the back of the speaker you can mess around with the uh, the EQ and they're all interconnectable so there's the 5 and the 6 and then the Precision MTM so as you can look a pair of Precision MTMs is uh, just under 2,400 euros these are not cheap but wow. they are uh, I, I don't think any of us here have probably got a studio well we, we know we know one person who who would have a studio for these but i think he's got some decent monitors anyway but um mm. aspirational i think is what we call these i'd love some of those but you'll never get them. and we'll all end up buying the micros which are very good mm. Mm. thoughts on these chaps or we'll move on to the next thing i do like them um, mm. the frequency range is like extended isn't it it goes yeah. like it's beyond like the 20 20 hertz 20 kilo it's thir thing. 36 to 30 K all right so it's Th yeah yeah uh, ultra flat to plus or minus 1 DB across 45 to 30 K 
unique linear phase response for unmatched clarity. Yeah, I mean they really are uh, top of top of the range things. But uh, yeah, not cheap. I like the option to buy one speaker. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, that's useful. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, you can't afford these monitors when they're priced individually. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I think that's what they've done is they've gone. Well, we'll show them what they cost individually, and so people won't go. Oh, how much? Well, when they showed me the um, the MT the original MTMs, and I think the individual price for a speak one of those is three four nine. I thought that was for a pair, and I thought that's not bad. And then they said, "Yeah, no, that's each." Yeah. Mm. Okay, so seven hundred for a pair. But I mean, I, I guess speakers are being sold individually more now than ever before because of the the real uh, upsurge in in Dolby Atmos mixing, and so therefore you're going to need eleven. 12 speakers depending on whatever con configuration you've got you know you're going to need two at the front one in the center four at the back four up the ceiling um four at the back i watched a film call there. um <laughs> but yeah it's yeah. it is um you know it is what it is that's kind of where where you i guess where you're looking at there but yeah, yeah. i don't think i certainly i don't have the space i don't have the budget and i don't have the neighbors um to get anything like this but yeah nice to know that they exist yeah I, d I like the idea of having something that you can totally depend on for your mixing you know i've got like i've got hs8 yamahas mm -hmm. uh, and i tend to i play somebody else's mix on here and mm -hmm. it sounds really middly and I think, right. oh, that's that's not. A, and I go in there and I start adding all these bass frequencies and everything, <laughs> and playing on something else, and it sounds as though it's underwater, you know. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> so there's something wrong with my room, really. Mm. So I've got like a, a Marantz amp as well, and just some little Dali speakers, uh, and I'll test things through there as well, just to balance mm. things out. But mm. that's if you, if you add all that together. These HS8s, I can't remember how much they were now, but that Marant Samp's about 500 quid. The mm. Darley's about 250 quid. Uh, and then the H HS8's on top. And I I've still got a struggle to get a, a, a satisfactory mix out of here. Yeah. So it's not actually that much m money, really, to if once you've done the arc treatment and everything, you, 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 know, you know that you can... Well, most Reliably studios get results. Yeah, I mean, most studios would have some really high-end monitors, you know, set in the walls or whatever. But then on top of the desk, on top of the meter bridge, there would be a pair of uh, NS10s or NS10s. those little, uh, what yeah. the little square ones, um, oh, Auratones. Auratones, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Crappiest speakers in the world, flattest, most uncolored thing in the world. But you mix something that sounds good on those, mm -hmm. and it invariably would sound great on everything. Yeah. Mm. So the so the theory goes. Well, now you don't need to have multiple different speakers. You can just have some of these with the the the, the speaker modeling software. Yeah. And you can make them sound, and then just at the flick of a switch or the click of a, a button on the screen, yeah. you can swap around. So I mean, that's got to be cool. That's got to yeah. be cool. But really? I guess I I might. I'm just not into. I'm not that deep into mixing and and stuff. I don't. Th yeah, I don't think I could stretch to the MTMs, but I'm. I'm you know, yeah. might be tempted to the, yeah. to the smallest pair. Because yeah, I never yeah. have this on dead loud in here. It's never like disturbing the neighbours or anything. I always no. have it on a really low level. Yeah. Um, so I don't really need these. But whatever, yeah. <laughs> but whatever IK Multimedia do, it, it's kind of witchcraft because these iLouds, I mean, you, you, you've seen there's these little small things. And I thought when I got these, I thought I'm going to need to put a sub in here somewhere because yeah. what's going to handle the bass? They handle the bass and they handle it yeah. really nicely. And, you know, I play, when I take the Fairlight out, I just take these and put them on, on either side of the keyboard. And people are like, where's your sub? And it's, no, it's just them. It's just wow. them. They are incredible. Um, good yeah. DSP going there. Anyway, um, IK Multimedia iLoud Precisions are available now. Um, uh, loans not guaranteed, but you're going to need one, I'm pretty sure. Um, 
we spoke the other day or the other week about the um, Rhodes Piano competition where you could have entered to win one of the 75 Mark 8 75 AEs, which is this special edition that um, Dan and Axel Hartman have collaborated on with this design. And I just wanted to show this little one minute video because not only is it great, you know, it sounds great, this thing looks just stunning. Cop a load of this. So this has got all black keys. I think the the sharps are a little darker or lighter. It's got the transparent lid on it as well. It will retail for thirteen and a half thousand pounds. Only seventy five being made ever. It's the all singing, all dancing version. The order book is opening. Uh, I think next week or the week after. I think it's the twelfth. So yeah, that's like in ten days' time. It's However, not even got the effects section in it. No, it has. Has it? Yeah. Oh, it has there. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's the seventy-five, uh, seventy-fifth anniversary edition. Um, it um, so it's going to cost thirteen four nine five. It sounds incredible. It looks incredible. Um, seventy-five being made. Thirty-five have already been snapped up. So there's only forty to go. So if you are in that ballpark in terms of you know wanting one of these and you want that one. Um, that uh, it's going to cost you 13 and a half grand, but it's hand built in Leeds. If it was hand built in Halifax, it would, would not cost as much, it's because it's in Leeds. No, that's just me being silly. Um, yeah, hand built with yeah, with love and care. Um, we've had Dan on the show, we're going to have to get him on again. Um, and maybe he'll have one he can play to us, his mellifluous tones. It does look great, doesn't it? It's, it looks great. Sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah, but it's um, it's a premium product, and we've spoken about it before. I'm not going to go down that path, but it it you get what you pay for. You're getting a real instrument, a real yeah. living, yeah. breathing mechanical instrument. So yeah, if you've got thirteen and a half grand knocking around, there you go. If you didn't win the competition, there. You can you can buy yourself one now. I'm just you glad it's a call back to the Mark One and not the Mark Two. Mm, indeed. Also, if you entered the competition, and you were one of the lucky runners up. Ten percent off. Steady. So what's ten percent? Thirteen four nine five. It's one thousand three hundred and forty nine pounds. So that makes it no. Mm, no. Oh, leg up you need. Still can't afford it. You have to put fifty percent down though. Um, fifty percent down when you order it. 50% on completion. Yeah, I can survive on half a kidney. Yeah, who needs kidneys anyway? It's overrated. Yeah. <sighs> free stuff. Let's talk about free stuff. Yeah, let's go free from one extreme. Free stuff's more like yeah. it. That's in my budget. We'll yeah. go from one extreme uh, to the other. Oh, bye-bye, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Hilton is in the chat. He's off to his gig. Well, congratulations. Have fun. Um, in the other way, you're... you're Supporting Duran Duran somewhere in America. Sorry, the bloody great moth just coming in. Um, See if you can get so, Nick to come on the show. Yeah, yeah, get Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Hilton, get Mr. Rhodes on the blower, and we'd we'll love to have him on the show. Um, thanks for popping in, as always. Um, so yeah, let's talk about something that is free. Um, and we've 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 already had. I should have done this this the other way round after we talked about Superior Drummer's new expansion, because this is new from Spitfire Audio's Labs division, um, and this is uh, Labs Vintage Drums. Ah, la batterie, la batterie.
There you go. Vintage drums from Labs is free. It sounds rather good, actually. Mm. I quite like the sound of that. Um, use it uh, in their typical interface. Um, let's just get rid of that playing in the background there. Uh, yeah, the usual Labs interface uh, comes free of charge. You just go to uh, labs.spitfireaudio.com. Um, has chance to play with any of these? Well, I haven't. Ooh. I haven't oh. because uh, <laughs> I downloaded it and then I put Cubase on to try it. And I couldn't find my labs plug in within Cubase. I don't know where I don't know where it had gone at all. Well it's funny you should say that because I clicked on the Spitfire Audio app to download them and it said, Oh, you need an update. So did the update, which went fine. I then went to Labs and saw the vintage drums and clicked install and it's, it comes up with that thing that says, Where do you want to install it? It has your default directory. I said, Yep, yeah, stick it there. And it says, Error, drive not compatible or something. Ah, yeah. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. It was compatible yesterday or the week before whenever I'd put something else on. This update seems to have now told the app that it will throw this error message up if your drive that you're installing to is not either NTFS uh, formatted or um, the is it AFPS, the Apple format. Now, mine is formatted as XFAT because I can sometimes swap that drive or used to swap it between a Mac and a PC or you know a laptop. Um, and now it's saying, but I thought, well, what's going on? Can I actually install this thing? And then read it a little closer and it says, you can carry on anyway, but we advise you to do this. So I carried on and it installed and it works absolutely fine. So they're now, they've got this persistent nag thing. So I guess someone somewhere has decided now that the performance required needs an, a native mm -hmm. file system on the hard drive rather than you know one that can spread between the two. I don't know that anybody in the chat, maybe Wagyu, uh, can explain why that might be. But that annoyed the hell out of me. Mm. Well, I can't find mine. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> but they sound uh, great. Yeah, it moved mine. <laughs> yeah. It moved my labs uh, in the listing from where right. it normally ah. was. It pushed it right down the bottom. <laughs> ah. When you call up the instruments on on my Cubase, you're scrolling for an hour. You know, yeah. and, and it was right down at the bottom where yeah. it really didn't need to be. Yeah. Well, Goose just said that he got lost during that thing. But were we trying to install it on the NAS? No. I've got an external. Oh, found it. <laughs> oh, there you go. So I've got an external SSD that I have all my Spitfire stuff on, because it requires something big and fast. Again, as my wife often tells me, and um, nothing had changed, and I'd been accessing that fi f fine for a while. But when I updated the Spitfire Audio app, it it threw up an error saying can't install or whatever to a non. NTFS or AFPS formatted drive um, but then there was a, an option that said but you can install it anyway but we don't recommend you know we recommend so it was just like it wasn't actually an error they're just telling me what they prefer me to do and to be honest I've been thinking well now I don't use a Windows machine really for music at all I might as well do it AFPS but of course that means I've got to move literally a terabyte of sample data somewhere else reformat that drive and then drop it all back in again this is a pain in the ass. i wouldn't read too much into it because i got the um needs to be an ntfs formatted drive oh yeah and it is oh uh, so it's interesting yeah so it's, it's not not a fat drive at all although mm. it actually is quite chunky but it's yeah, but it is NTFS formatted anyway, mm. and it still come up with it. It needs to be in, you know, ideally it needs to be NTFS. Uh, well, I, 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 I get that, but mm. it, why is it now all of a sudden just? St I don't know, we might weird. find there's another app update very shortly that might fix that. Yeah, because there's a programmer somewhere going shit, shit, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, Ian J. Cole saying there used to be a bug, but I thought they'd fixed it. Um, I don't know whether that was the same thing. I mean, I know that, yeah, the Spitfire Audio app has, on occasion, this is the like the software management app, not the the VST plugin. Mm. 
Um, it has, it's not, it's not rolling cloud flaky, but it's certainly not as as stable as some of the the others out there. Well, but. there's been lots of this. Um, here's a here's a fix to fix the bug, mm. um, but obviously you've now got another different bug. But there will yeah. be a fix to fix that bug. Yeah. But there'll be a different bug. And so much for regression So the cycle testing. continues. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And indeed. it's just a good way of keeping the uh, an eye on who's got what. Yeah. But let's get back. <laughs> Vintage drums sounds good, and you know, for free, you're getting a really nice sounding acoustic drum. Can't kit, knock which it. Can't knock yeah. it again. You can't. As we you always can't say. knock labs. Anybody who no. knocks labs is an idiot because it's free. Yeah, yeah. and it's Except, it great quality stuff. I, I do think that it sound. It seems a little bit unlab like. The the, the choice. It, it's, it's a little too ordinary, isn't it? It's yeah, like yeah. It's a straightforward and it's a, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's you've, a you've gone from one extreme to the other. Yeah. Analog recorded kit. It sounds yeah. lovely, but mm. normally there would be like dying deer in the background, or you know, it, yeah. they'd be playing it with chainsaws or something in the, <laughs> in an empty pool. <laughs> playing a dying deer with a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine yeah. that? Using yeah. toasters underwater. Yes. Ah well. But there I you go. I don't know what happened to the guy who recorded that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard he quit. He was a bit frazzled. Oh, um, oh. Where are we? Hang on. Can we do it in time? There we go. go. Yay. Um, yeah, so Labs Vintage Drums, free now. Uh, Labs.spitfireaudio.com. Go and fill your boots. But just be careful. It might query your file system on which your samples are stored. Uh, I mean... It's probably going to give me a kick up the arse and make me reformat that drive just because I'm yeah, I'm 100% Mac now. But anyway, um, so we've done that. We've done that. We've done that. What have we got left? Ah, uh, we've ah uh, ah uh, two things. Two more things um, that weren't on the list because they've only sort of re very recently happened. One's uh, very good news. One is not so good news. So uh, the world of electronic music has lost a bit of a hero. Uh, for many people he was a musical collaborator with people like Ian Boddy as as, as well as his his brother and many others um, but the world uh, lost yes. uh, Mark Shreve um, just mm. the other day um, this was Mark from a copy of uh, Sound on Sound 1995 so a little bit out of date but as quick as I could find without sort of delving into sometimes best known although probably not his best work um, for writing uh, Touch Me for Samantha Fox. Well, he didn't actually write it for Samantha Fox. I think he wrote it for himself and then the producer picked up on it and mm. they redid it for, for Samantha. And then he went on to do other bits and bobs. But um, uh, who was it that was... Oh, it was um, Keith McCard in the um, the Facebook group today was posting uh, some of Mark's music and it really is. Um, the, the album, uh, what was it called now? gone completely out of my head um it was recorded in about 85 86 and it was basically a who's who of what uh was big at the time you know fairlights ppgs dx7s jupiter 8s oberheims legion that's the name of the album um that's the one and it's it's brilliant brilliant stuff and incredibly of its time but this guy was uh, very well respected and um uh, highly regarded and sadly has has passed on so uh, very sad mm. news to report there did you ever encounter him uh, Kent um, either no I don't think so no. I don't think so but, uh, but I do get a lot of customers through agents and mm. you know handlers and stuff like that anyway so yeah but uh, yeah go and uh, google him and be amazed at his stuff and, and be disappointed that he's not around anymore to uh, yeah. to create it um, so that's the sad news so um, condolences to Mark's uh, family friends and colleagues um, uh, I know Ian Boddy was uh, worked closely with him and was quite um, quite torn up about it understandably so mm. but yeah some really great stuff there so uh, sad news uh, on the other hand uh, on the good news front there is for everybody's uh, delectation free of charge, a brand new Alex Ball video, which I watched uh, uninterrupted on a big screen TV with big speakers today because it is the um, 
I visited the Italian Synth Museum video and it's everything you ever wanted to know about classic, rare, unique Italian Over synthesizers. Over the summer of 2022, I had the immense privilege and pleasure of visiting the Museo del Synth Marchigiano, which is the most comprehensive collection of rare and obscure vintage Italian synthesizers. So it's full of Italian synths. Um, Elkers, Krumars, obviously, but then, you know, there's, there's a Bon Tempe thing and there's stuff that I've never heard of um, and some really incredible things, you know, including the Morricone synth, which is this, I forget the name of it now, and there's a brilliant drum machine that was like six or seven years ahead of um, the, you know, anything like the TR-808 or the CR-78. Um, I'm just trying to, where is it now? Um, it's, it's a brilliant, yeah, it's the uh, Eco Computer Rhythm this thing and you play it just by oh, yeah. you know punching these buttons in um but you can also drop a punch card in and like instantly the pattern is loaded so just yeah. drop it through and, it goes, and the pattern's there and it does it every time um and you can do weird time signatures and i mean have a listen to this i'd use that drum sound I want. Yeah. Why has nobody made a plug-in of this? I'd be happy with that. Or maybe they have, and I just don't know about it. But, yeah, I mean, there's there's some amazing things on here, and, of course, you know, he does understand the, uh, the, the Chilton Talent Maker. This was a great thing. Apparently, the soundtrack for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind was all done on one of these things, and the Chilton Talent Maker is to the Octagon what the Chamberlain or the Mellotron was to the Chamberlain you know it kind of copied yeah. that technology because you know somebody used to work there and again this video is full of Alex's research and, and great history uh, and storytelling and of course very tongue-in-cheek humor when he comes to uh, where is it Uranus of course oh, all yeah. the jokes are there yeah as you would expect and and rightly so um, but yeah, there's a there's a nice big section here on the synthex which just sounds dreamy as hell. And everyone can kind of get uh, a synthex experience now for just thirty nine dollars with Cherry Audio's uh, new plugin. You still got that one propping up the door behind you there, Ken? Yeah. There she is. But yeah, I mean it's that just incredible. In that one's in really nice condition because the uh, fan is actually quieter than the sound. <laughs> <laughs> and it all finishes off with the um, Baliani Solista, which is a really rare thing, but it's kind of like, well, it's an auto accompaniment machine. It's just, it's just so cool. I can see, right, I can see there being a big resurgence in Italian synthesizers mm. in the next year. It's not only just because of this, but, you know, because of things like El Corex from Cherry Audio. And I think everyone's, like, looking around for something that's different. And I think this has been uh, an area of synthesizer design and manufacture that has kind of often been overlooked because they think, oh, it's just Italian synths. It must be organ-related to, you know, to the the Elkers and the crew Mars of this world. But actually, there's some really, really interesting... Do you get much of Italian things coming through your doors, Kent? Oh, God. Apart from me. Yeah, loads. That was quite a good one. That yeah, was, yeah, loads. Thank you. Yeah, I think, yeah. It's, uh, I think it's incredibly sad how the whole Italian synth thing ended. Mm. And Because uh, I think the factory's still sitting there untouched. I think the banks still own it. Yeah, just, uh, everybody was just locked. They came back for work one day, and everything had been locked. Yeah, and nobody allowed in, and just abandoned, and nothing has happened to it ever since. Mm. So there's gear and machine, you know, machinery, uh, just sitting there, gathering dust. Crazy, isn't it? Uh, the whole you know Italian synth industry just sitting there. Because I think I think in the end it was all became one enormous company. Yeah, they all bought each other out eventually. Didn't yeah, they? And it all just become. Was it? Was it? Was it Gem in the end that owned everything? Yeah. So, because they did a, um, was it the S three? 
which was a digital synthesizer uh, yeah. akin to like an M1 type mm. of thing with polyphonic aftertouch. Yeah. Oh. You know, yeah, right back in the day. I think, the, I can't remember, maybe the S2 had poly aftertouch as well. But, it, you know, it's, it, but it, was, it's, it was quirky designs. It was fantastic, what, you know, different ways they went about you know, building their things. Mm. Um, that was y unique compared to how you know Japan and and, and the West were built because even then there was similarities between the, the two disciplines, but the Italian thing was just on its own. It was. Just mm. I was amazed to wonderful sounds. Yeah, I was amazed to spot a, a skyline on, uh, mm. at the intro of the video. That mm -hmm. was supposed to be my first ever synth the skyline oh yeah uh i remember standing in the shop with my mum i yeah. was only a, i was only a nipper i was only young and uh, my mum said i said this is brilliant this because i remember it had like an angled back but in the shop <laughs> they had it so the back was flat and the keys were angled up <laughs> and i was playing it like this you know and i was like this is amazing this mum you know, it was about, I don't know, it was about a thousand pounds, like yeah. even then, yeah. you know, maybe yeah. more. And uh, my mum said, I'll get it for you. You can have yeah. it for Christmas. <gasps> I was like, wow. I, I, I remember like, just like, it, it, it became from this slight fascination with this sin <laughs> to an absolute like hysterical <laughs> excitement. It was like, yeah. oh my God, oh my God. Start and, counting uh, down the days to Christmas. Yeah, oh, yeah. so yeah. Uh, she, 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 tried to, she, she tried to sign up for like finance for it and got knocked back after she, oh, no. she told me that I could have it. And so we we, we left empty-handed. But I, I forgot what it was called. And, and then after like loads of internet searching years later, I discovered it was this Skyline thing. And I'm trying to get one, you know, because yeah. it's that thing that it's that elusive thing that I, I, I nearly had and didn't. Yeah. I probably never use it, but I, I am trying to get one. Clearly, uh, um, Tristy Lombard Finance hadn't got up north yet. <laughs> yeah, <'Cause> literally, <laughs> yeah. literally, it goes like, how many legs do you have? <laughs> Two. Yeah, go on. Then. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. I yeah. Used to, when I used to um, work at Argos, we used Lombard. Yeah, um, for our finance in there. Yeah, I had geez. a guy. Uh, I bought uh, when I was buying the uh, my Poly Six. I had fifty quid, and it's a brand new Poly Six. And I'm filling out the form and everything like that. And they go, right, who's your guarantor? I said, oh, I haven't bought anybody with me. <laughs> and he goes, oh, he goes, I'll sign it. Then. So the bloke in the shop signed it. Nice. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah, no problem. Actually, my first kind of... They were the days. <laughs> yeah. The first keyboard that I bought brand new was that Yamaha VSS200. Mm. And I bought that from the co-op. I worked at the co-op. So I didn't have to go. I just like, They just did it HP for whatever it was a month and, and took it directly out of my wages. That's the only way I knew I could safely buy this thing and not then, you know, because I was terrible with money. I'd, you know... Levered oh, yeah. at the weekend and you know smoke me fags away and yeah. not be left with much else and be eating bourbon biscuits and UHT milk for dinner. So it was the only way I knew that I could buy it and it would definitely get paid for and not get taken away from me or reclaimed. Yeah. And um, yeah, it uh, that's uh, that's that's my first. So I think we all have a story to tell about buying synths on finance. Oh God, yeah. I, I bought some lights once <laughs> for the for the band that we oh, were right, in yeah. at the time. I yeah, bought yeah. some uh, a big lighting rig, a controller, uh, uh, and two monitors as well. And, and the complete package was a couple a couple of thousand pounds, maybe three thousand pounds. I signed up for the finance, and every month, <laughs> <laughs> every month this money kept appearing in my account. <laughs> And they'd filled out the finance wrong at the shop. No. And they were paying me. <laughs> <laughs> they were paying me. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and uh, I, I was going to keep quiet about it, but, like, my conscience got the better of me. I was going to say, what's the name of the shop? Yeah. Uh, it's shut down now, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I was a, a lighting shop here in yeah. St. Helens. Well, wow. in, in St. Helens, around the corner. Good yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, bought, um, what did I, I bought my event Easy Bus mixer. I bought that on on uh, HP from 
think it was Academy of Sound or something. Mm. Um, and did I do my? I bought an R and one X from there as well. I, th I think I might have done that on finance. But nowadays, it's like you know, I'll, I'll buy something on the credit card and then transfer it to a new credit card with zero percent, you know, balance transfers for two years, and pay the minimum off. Yeah. And then at the end of that, it's whittled down enough, and I'll just you know I'll pay it off. It's, Different, different way of doing things these days yeah but uh Not yeah patience for saving <laughs> indeed yeah I, and it soon goes yeah i'm terrible with money but yeah alex ball brand new video i visited yeah. the italian synth museum it's absolutely brilliant really really good watch and i said i really think there's going to be uh, a resurgence in interest in you know the classic italian synths of the day um they weren't prolific i mean you know, some of the stuff that alex talks about you know, they only made 40 or 50 <laughs> so there's not a lot around there but yeah there's some really really cool stuff and if you go and watch that video um go and watch it for the italian since but stay for the brilliant jean-michel jarre impression yeah where he keeps doing the thing with the head you know this <laughs> Oh, we've got to get him back on the show. We've got yeah. to get him back on the show. Um, he expects some more stuff from Alex soon. Um, he's He's been a busy bee. Uh, so there's some good stuff coming. Uh, but there you go. Uh, Italian Synth Museum from Alex Ball. And, of course, uh, I can't remember where he said it was. And I ought to know, but I don't. Uh, it's in Italy. But... Mm. Uh, quite whereabouts in Italy, I don't know. Anyway, um, that is, I think, it. I'll add something. Add oh, something. Go, go for it, yeah. On YouTube, there is mm -hmm. a video of somebody breaking in to the gem factory and going around <gasps> oh, I've and seen filming that. a bit. You've seen that one? I've seen that one, yes. Even the cups, you know, the half cup of coffee still on the desktop. Still there, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I think if you, uh, I can't remember what the title of that was now. Ah uh, yes, no, no. I remember seeing that. Um, oh, I'll have to. Well, have, yeah. Now you've mentioned it, I'll, when I go through the video and put yeah. the chapters in, I'll try and find. I've it. got, I've got a little bit of news for uh, Cubase oh. users. It, oh, it's go on only, then. So, it's only quick. Uh, apparently, they've given away a, a load of plugins to oh, people yes. who's already got it. So you could get the CS80. Uh, there's some effects in there. I can't remember what they all are now. But if you go to my Steinberg. There's a tab at the top that says vouchers, and you can claim all these full licenses. Yeah. Uh, there's even, um, oh, what, what's that? Vocode, auto tune thing that's dead popular. I can't remember mm. the name of it. It's that anyway. There's an essential yeah. version of that included. That's, is oh, that Melodyne. Mel Melodyne. There's yeah, a yeah, Melodyne yeah. essential included in it as well. That's so, Pro 12 users, isn't it? Yeah, yep. Yeah, it's if you've got it though, it's you know you might not. No, know I it's think, the, think it's cheap. It. Yeah, but I I know they they said oh if you're a Pro 12 user, but I don't know about the other ones. But I imagine it's quite possible they are all yeah all, all versions. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, mm. and because they've got forty percent off at the moment on all the Cubase products as well. Right. So including upgrades. So either we buy full price or upgrade because I, I, I am still because I've I was such a Cubase fanboy back in the day and I still am sort of tempted. But it's great. I never, the cross, it. never leave the cross, it. The cross grade was 185. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, I kind of just, pay, you, know, you know, I paid that for Logic and I never have to really pay for Logic again. And I really know Logic now, or mm. you know, I'm certainly yeah, more familiar enough. with it. Do I need to go? I think if somebody said, I want to work with you and it's all got to be done in Cubase, then yeah, maybe. But I think <clears throat> I might just uh, continue giving I'll that I'll lend swerve. you me dongle. Ooh. Oh, Macy's I've, st I've still got my LPT port dongles from Steady. Cubase three days yeah. in those big do you remember they came in those big boxes that opened yeah. up with all the manuals and everything was yeah. you know, inside and I've got I've all. got like Cubase two I think for Atari oh, right. ST yeah. in the three box three was my first PC one. Yeah. the dongle that used to make the software crash yeah <laughs> <laughs> was that the, the ST one had that massive thing that sort of bolted yeah. on the side wasn't it yeah we into the i think it was the rs232 on the back yeah so i actually got the cracked version so it wouldn't crash anymore well yeah. that was a, apparently that was a common thing wasn't it it was yeah yeah, yeah. 
I know there was also a, like a, a way of expanding the MIDI on where the dongle went, wasn't there, I think? Wasn't mm. there some sort of... And you couldn't use the dongle with the MIDI expander, and so people were using the crack version because of that as well. So. Yeah, there was something along those... Yeah, because I, I, I got a, a couple of... I think it, they were Rose Morris or something, mergers. So oh, you yeah. have two master keyboards going into the Whoa. into Cubase on your ST. Ooh. <laughs> really carried away. Yeah. yeah. Get you yeah. in your technology. Mm. Well, there you go. That's another show in the bag. Episode, I think, it was 126. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, first of all, big thank you to uh, Paulie Alex Bow for being on the show. Uh, what brilliant. a great guest. Um, yeah, and uh, Paulie didn't stay for the whole show because he wants to make sure that his wife is tended to and cared for and looked after because any day now um, there'll be a mini Paulie knocking around and um, learning obscure 90 synthesizers. Yeah, getting stuck uh, into that with like, his dad. Yeah. data entry so. slider. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. That would be his first words, data entry slider. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, massive thanks to Paulie. And if you haven't already, uh, Magical Synth Adventure is um, their channel, uh, and you can go and subscribe to that now. And, of course, Vogue Renegade is Paulie's musical output channel as well, so you can find that on there. Paulie, as I said, is an active member over on the Facebook group. So if you have any questions uh, for Paulie, then please you know, post them in there and they'll they'll do their best to answer over there. So massive thanks to, to Paulie. Next week, Jem Godfrey on the show. Looking forward to getting Jem on. He's such a lovely guy and a brand new Fairlight owner as well. So we'll be comparing notes. Then we've got Dan and Mitchell from Cherry Audio the week after that and uh, mopping up the end of the month the uh, brilliant Bob Coover from Groove Synthesis uh, is going to be joining us at the end of this month to tell us all about Third Wave which hopefully will be shipping by then because I think September is when they were looking to ship um, and then of course October we've got Synthfest coming up the first week of October so they're, I don't know what we're going to do because I'm going to be in Sheffield on the Friday night and I'm usually on the Friday evening, I'm out getting curried and beard up. So I don't know if there'll be a live show or whether you guys want to do that or whether we do a pre-record. It's entirely up to you. We'll have a chat about it, but there'll be something. Maybe we do a pre-record and throw to me wandering around the, the hall as it's being set up. Could do something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, Dina in the chat uh, I wasn't going to say anything but she, she has announced it in the chat Dina Perlman from the Alan R. Perlman Foundation is coming down uh, coming down coming across from America for Synthfest yes. um, she's going to have a little little table there selling some merch and we're going to be chatting with her uh, and of course don't forget that there's also the sub hardcore movie at the end of the day uh, which features Steve Howell and this amazing East German uh, synthesizer so that's it's gonna be a fantastic weekend really looking mm -hmm. forward to that um guest wise we're a little bit sparse we need to get uh, get a move on get some people in there uh, but don't forget we've got david gampson um ex of scritty politi um and producer of people like michelle uh, michelle indigio cello and lots of others besides uh, he's coming on in december <laughs> Happy birthday to Steve Picaro, who it's his birthday today. If you haven't watched our Steve Picaro show, um, it's episode 70-something. Get, you know, Once you finish here, go back and have a look at that because he's an absolute ledge. Um, Kent, what have you got this weekend? You're not dyeing your hair, are you? Uh, no. 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 I've, I've ordered the dye. Um, uh, Matt um, in the chat, his uh, Mrs. Vicky, uh, put me on to uh, uh, one that will probably not try to kill me. Good. Um, good so good, we'll good, try good. that out. Uh, and I will probably because now Fiona's got her new super telly. That's her done for the. For, she'll be stuck in front of that, so I'll probably <laughs> she'll melt the, the sofa. Yeah, I'll probably open the pub up tomorrow night. Cool, 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 cool. I'm going to see um, John Cooper Clark tomorrow night. Oh. Yeah, which I was very excited about. So, bit of bit of culture, bit oh. of poetry. Yeah, so looking forward to that. Ben, you gigging? Yeah, just a just a local one uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Um, nice. We've got some interesting stuff coming. So, pub, well. anyone can come to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where? Give it I'm a plug sure then. It, I'm not sure if it's sold out. It's at JD's in Saint Helens. Uh, okay. If you, oh, like you want to see Electromantics, get yourself down there. Um, 
I, I've no idea where we are next week. I'll tell you on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a good job you don't do the promotions. Well, do you, know, do, you yeah. do the promotions? I, I, yeah, I'm <laughs> terrible at it, but yeah, yeah, I do. Some, <laughs> He's playing somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Cool stuff. You, All right, you're guys. Little, you're little, just, just follow the noise. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a good noise as well. Oh, it's yeah, a damn good, good noise. noise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... Uh, no Ramsey show tomorrow apparently he's got family stuff on so there won't be anything synth related tomorrow afternoon but tomorrow night might be some Kent action there, there might might be some Kenty action if he hasn't yes, killed there. himself another way yeah, yeah true uh, yeah. I think Jamie and Dom will be back in their usual slots on Sunday I, uh, I assume I haven't checked but yeah mm. I'm sure you guys are all over that um and yeah i think that's that's pretty much it so that's another show in the bag thank you ever so much to everyone for watching thank you for all of your donations that those of you that have done that fantastic really appreciate it it sort of you know it keeps keeps this thing going chugging along mm -hmm. what else would we do on a friday night and um yeah have a great weekend and we will see you same time same place next week uh with jem godfrey and uh, so do make sure you like subscribe and share and uh yeah we'll see you then ta-ta everyone bye bye, bye. good and tired. <laughs>